Isaac, who leads an offense that's coming off a big victory over the Rain Wolves. Bragging rights are on the line between these Catholic school powers in Lafayette. It's St. Thomas More versus Turlings Catholic on game time. Champs in Division Two are on the road tonight in hostile territory as they cross town to take on the Turlings Catholic Rebels, looking for a big win in front of their home crowd. It's Turlings and St. Thomas More, and it's high school football in the state of Louisiana on your view. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Lerma, along with my broadcast partner, Jason DeQuere. Thanks again for joining us here tonight, and this should be a good one. Our only visit during the regular season to Lafayette on our year view schedule, and we could not pick a better game. St. Thomas More with a record of 5-1, and one, taking on Turlings Catholic, who is 3-3. Three and three. These are two teams that match up pretty well, though. Yeah, match up well, know each other. And they've had one common opponent, Catholic High, who's 5A, and they both dropped that game. And so I think this is going to be a very evenly matched game. And, you know, who knows? Maybe this year Turlins Catholic can change the series. You know that about it. Let's take a look at our key players to watch in this game. St. Thomas Moore, they count on a running game attack led by Chris Primo. And then for Turlings, their standout quarterback, Wesley Blazek. Yeah, for St. Thomas Moore, it's going to start up front, running the football, and Chris Primo is their big, strong back who's capable of getting that done. And then for Turles Catholic, Wesley Blazik. I mean, a phenomenal athlete. He's got the prototype size, but also has done a good job running the football for Turles Catholic this year. Let's take a look at our keys to victory, brought to you by ITI Technical College. First of all, for St. Thomas Moore and their Hall of Fame coach, Jim Hightower, and their keys, Jason, surround Wesley Blazik and trying to stop him. Yeah, and they, they want to maintain ball control. And so that's obviously getting that running game going and maybe shorten the game a bit. Then they want to prevent the big play. Obviously, Blazik has big play potential. They don't want him to get the big play. And then they also need to bring him down at the quarterback position. He's really developed as a runner. And then for Turlings Catholic and their first-year head coach, Dane Chaponche, one of the things they want to do here is stop STM's running game. And I don't know if those little guys will be able to help him tonight, <laughs> but they want to get off the field on third down and then they need to be efficient in the passing game. They don't ask Blazik to throw it a ton, but when they do, they need completions. And then, of course, they want to run the ball, too, and control the line of scrimmage. And they got a really good offensive line to do that, led by LSU commitment, Thomas Perry. We'll take a break. When we come back, it'll be kickoff between St. Thomas Moore and Turlings. Stay tuned. You're watching Game Time on Your View. Attention to detail makes the world go round. At Baker Printing, our approach to the printing business is very simple. Treat it as if it were your own. That's not always an easy job, but it comes from the top down in our company. We thrive on the unique jobs. Bottom line, we take care of our customers' projects as if they were our very own. At Baker Printing, attention to detail makes our world go round. You can live the dream life right now at Summa Crossing Apartments in Livingston Parish. Imagine luxurious and affordable living where it is safe and the school systems are awesome. A quiet community with a private, well-stocked lake and a cool, relaxing swimming pool. Easy access for Baton Rouge commuters or students at Southeastern. It's not a dream, it's real and waiting for you. Come see Summa Crossing, exit 19 on I-12. Back at Rebel Field on the campus of Turlings Catholic High School for this big matchup in Lafayette. Turlings Catholic taking on St. Thomas More. These two teams met a season ago and it was won by St. Thomas More 42 to 14. Last time that Turlings Catholic got a victory in this rivalry was back in 2015, a 42 to 28 score. Usually when these two teams meet, it's a lot of points on the scoreboard. 
Let's send it down to the field and Jessica Province, our third member of the broadcast crew. Hey, Jeff, tonight taking the field, we'll see a broad spectrum on the coaching level. That's because we'll have a legendary head coach, Jim Hightower, of the St. Thomas More Cougars on one side of the field. And on the other side of the field, we'll have Turling's Catholic head coach, Dane Chaponche, in his first season. Now, here's the difference. There's 36 years separating the two. Coach Hightower has 401 wins and has been inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, while Dane Chaponche has 29 wins under his belt. I guess we'll get a chance to see whether it's age over beauty or coaching experience over process. Jeff, back up to you. Thanks a lot, Jessica. And now it's time for the singing of our national anthem. singing of our national anthem here at Rebel Field, a packed house on the campus of Turlings Catholic as they face their rivals, St. Thomas More. And there's a look at first year head coach, Dane Chaponche, his career record 21 and nine as he replaced his father, Sonny Chaponche, who won nearly 200 games here, 194 victories in 22 seasons for Sonny. Sonny is the athletics director but he's completely hands off when it comes to what happens on the football field. But as I was uh, watching Sonny here earlier, he is uh, pacing around there just like he would if he was coaching here tonight. Well, he knows there's a change in the garden. The first thing you see there, Shaponshe, just like it's spelled, right, Jeff? Yes. I mean, you know, but um, look, uh, he's, he's excited for this. His dad is excited to kind of hand over the reins. And this is Dane Shaponshe's team and a chance to get a win here against St. Thomas Moore. And kicking it off. Ian Judas and he's into the end zone and he's been doing that quite a bit this season for Turlings Catholic so we'll see St. Thomas Moore's offense first their offensive coordinator is Shane Savwa a former quarterback for longtime head coach for STM Jim Hightower and their quarterback tonight will be Caleb Holstein we will not see Peyton Landry STM has been going with a two quarterback system this season but Landry on the sidelines with his arm in a sling so it will be the sophomore i would imagine getting most of the snaps and he is a physically gifted player a young quarterback six foot four 205 pounds they'll go on the ground and on the first carry not much happening at all there for stm as he barely got to the line of scrimmage was chris primo a gain of one let's take a look at your starting lineups in this contest brought to you by livingston parish economic development council primo crier pace on the wide receiver john robertson another wide receiver and tight end thomas morton a half roll and the pass is complete on the far sidelines that's grant arsenal his 19th catch of the season 
He has over 200 yards receiving this season. Up to the line of scrimmage is St. Thomas Moore after picking up the first first down of the ball game. No Jonathan Harding on that offensive line for STM. He is out with an ankle sprain. Here's a flip. This is William Cryer, and Cryer is up to the 39-yard line. Finally brought down by Bryant Mason, who has moved from strong safety to linebacker because of an injury to Cole Newland. Well, a good look at the replay here to see if he actually went down. You can see his thigh there kind of touching the ground, but there's a flag on the play, so it's all for not look like it's holding, and much of the gain is coming back anyway. So this is now down to the 21-yard line. First down and about 22. Holstein directing traffic and Turlings nearly jumped off sides, but they didn't. Only two seconds on the play clock. Does the sophomore know it? The coaching staff does, and we got an early timeout. Well, it kind of looked like when he jumped, St. Thomas Moore was kind of looking around, hey, throw the flag, and the ref never threw it, so the coaching staff had to get a timeout so that they didn't get a delay of game there. Game time on your view is brought to you by Louisiana Lift. At Louisiana Lift, we're always on call. And by Pondas Barbecue, slow cooked, fall off the bone perfection, and the best baked beans in America. And by Peak Performance. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete and everyone believe in better. There you look at Holstein. He can make all the throws. Has been in a quarterback competition with Peyton Landry all season long. Landry more of a runner, so they lose that dynamic from their offense tonight as there's a flag before the snap. And our referee tonight is Boyd Guy. That time, Turlings was offsides. The umpire tonight is Kearney Dergeron. Lyman is Tim Atkins. Another line judge is Travis LeBlanc, back judge Tommy Garrett, and the game clock operator is Ken Myers, as these are officials from the Lafayette Area Football Officials Association. First down and 17, now at the 26-yard line. They hand it off, good penetration in the backfield for the Rebels and nothing happening. First guy there, Cameron Kaye, and let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Rebels, allowing 26 points a game. They run a 4-2-5. Patrick Green is a really good player, probably their best interior defensive lineman. Getting Bo LeBlanc back tonight is huge for them. And then in the secondary, Hayden Judys, he is a physical player back there. They'll play man-to-man. -man. They blitz a little bit more than they did under Sonny Chaponche. And they'll give you some zone looks as well. They have five interceptions on the year. Here's Holstein over the middle and too high for his receiver as he was looking for J.P. Robertson, who makes a lot of big plays for St. Thomas Moore. And here's been a critical thing for Turlings. They have not done very well on third downs this season defensively, allowing opponents to convert on 41% of their third down opportunities. Well, and this is going to be a clear passing opportunity here. And Turlings Catholic, one of the things that Coach Chaponche talked about was getting more pressure on the quarterback getting to the quarterback and bringing him down. They've done good thus far stopping the run, but they need to get some pressure here. Holstein throws, there was pressure on him. The pass is off the hands of the intended receiver, Robertson, and Turling's defense gets off the field. Now it looks like the quarterback, though, is banged up. He did take a shot after that play, and Caleb Holstein is slow to get up. Well, this is what they wanted. When, obviously, we want to make sure that Holstein is okay there. But in looking at that last play, Cross Guillory was the one who came on the pressure, kind of in that rover outside linebacker position, and that's what Chaponche is trying to dial up here for Turlins Catholic. Again, Peyton Landry is already out with an injury, one of the two quarterbacks that the Cougars used. Hopefully it's just the fact that Holstein's been had the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully that's just it, and he'll be able to continue in this game. And that's what it seems like to me, Jeff, in that, in that play. It looked like his helmet got him in the upper midsection, not in the helmet area, but in the midsection of that pad, right where you would think 
the wind would get knocked out and and that's um probably what happened there so the punt team coming on from St. Thomas. This replay here doesn't show it entirely, but you'll get an idea of the kind of pressure that was in on him. He, you're right, Jason. I mean, that helmet caught him right in the chest. He did a good job just getting that football away because that could have been a big loss there for St. Thomas Moore. So on the punt, it's Trevor Robertson. He's averaging 29 yards a punt. They bring the pressure, but they don't get to it. And it takes a great St. Thomas Moore bounce and roll. Wow, look at this. This will be his fifth punt inside the 20-yard line this season. Well, and that's the flaw. When you don't get up there and field those punts, I know you want to be sure, but if those punts hit the ground, there's an opportunity for a big roll, and St. Thomas Moore got a big one there, flipping the field position. 58-yard punt for Trevor Robertson. That beats his previous long of 48. So there is Wesley Blazik, the six foot three, 210 pound senior, former defensive end, really sets the tone offensively. Great GPA in the classroom and a high football IQ. And they do have some design runs for him, even though he's not a great runner. And Brennan Romero wrapping him up, 25 tackles on the season for the de senior defensive lineman for the Cougars. Let's take a look at this Turlings offense, averaging 26 points a game. Xander Garber has rushed for over 200 yards on the season. Some good wide receivers, Connor Talbot and Noah Romero have some good size, both over six feet tall. And the offensive line led by the LSU commitment, Thomas Perry, Justin Matthews is a three-year starter at the other tackle. Blazik to the air and the pass is complete on the far side for a few yards anyways, as it's caught by Connor Talbot, that his, that's his ninth catch of the season. Averaging nearly 14 yards a carry, and they need to complete passes. That's what Dane Chaponche told us. The passing game has been hit and miss this season. Third down, and we'll call it six from their own 23-yard line. First drive of the game for the Turlings offense. Blazik looking to his left, over the middle, and it's complete for a first down and much more. Seth. Labelette still pushing the pile forward all the way up to the 50-yard line. And that gets the Turlings fan base fired up. Well, you can see they are jacked up. They're feeling it. Really want to have a chance to compete well against St. Thomas Moore. And you can see Labelette just slips in right behind the linebackers. Good identification there by Blazik and puts it on the numbers. And Labelette shows his strength running the football. There you go. Just delivers it right over the head of the linebacker. Labelette, good concentration, good catch. Champagne on the carry now. The senior on the jet sweep picks up another Turlings first down. Let's take a look at the STM defense, which has been really good this season, only allowing nine points a game. I really like their defensive line. Sam Greenwood, Elliott Roundtree, Paul Laborde, a very instinctive player at linebacker. And then in the secondary, Kay Broussard led the team in interceptions last year. This year, he already has three interceptions. First and 10 as the Rebels are on the move to the 36-yard line. That's a backwards gotta pass. Gotta they got to get out of it if you're Turlings. Instead, St. Thomas Moore does, and it is Cougars football, but are they calling it an incomplete pass? Well, this is going to be close, oh, Jeff. This is a I, I was thinking like you were, that it was clearly a backwards pass, and uh, let, let's see. Ben uh, Thibodeau fell on it, but boy. Here, here this, we go. No, that's, that's, that's a backwards pass. He yeah. threw it from the 46 or the 36. From that angle, it, it clearly looks like a backwards pass. Turlings gets the first big break in the ball game, and Blazik puts his head down and gets eight yards. Let's take a look, another look One at it. One more time, yeah. And that, uh, yeah it's uh, at least a half a yard backwards. A half a yard back. back. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, when you're at home, you're at home. So uh, <laughs> some of those calls go your ways. So they've survived one here, and uh, uh, fortunately able to keep the ball. Let's see if they can convert now. Third and two in four down territory with the football at the 28 yard line. Turlings. Been averaging about 306 yards of total offense run off the right side. That's right at the stage. Hayden Judy's foot. getting the carry and it's, you're right, right near the first down marker. On third down conversions this year, Turlings is 50%. Now, this is a fourth down opportunity. There are 12 of 18 on fourth downs this season. Fourth and one. Yeah. 
Judy's in the backfield with Blazik. Blazik will keep it. Blazik's got the first down. Tackled by Cade Broussard to the 24-yard line. So Dane Chaponche calls up the right play there offensively. And they wanted to control the line of scrimmage tonight, Jason. They did that here on fourth down. Yeah, when you got a quarterback that's 6'2", 200 pounds, he's your biggest back in the backfield. So why not put it in his hands on fourth and short? And Blazik and that offensive line was able to deliver. Blazik averaging nearly five yards a carry. Really a competitive player. One of the things that they talk about with him is trying to keep his emotions in check throughout the game. Blazik to the end zone. And it is incomplete. Kenny Broussard got over there at the last second and actually hit him in the back. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be pretty close there. Uh, obviously, he did not get his did not get his hand around it. That's why I was wondering if it may draw the flag there, but obviously it did not. Let's see here when you well couldn't get a look there. Here we go. And you'll see the defensive back never really gets his head around, and they may be thinking uh, uncatchable. I couldn't tell from that angle whether it was contact first, but typically when that defensive back doesn't get their head around, it draws the flag. Quick pass complete for a few yards that time. Cole Champagne, seven catches coming into the game. Five foot nine, 155 pounds senior. Brings up third down and five. And Turlin's continuing to stay up-tempo here on this drive. Garber in the backfield with Blazin. Xander Garber, it's hard to see him out there. Five foot six, 145 pounds. But he's a good running back for this Rebels team. 10 seconds on the play clock. And we have five minutes to go in this opening quarter. Blazik to his left. And in tight coverage, did he get a foot in bounds? He certainly did. That's a first down for Turlings inside the 10-yard line as it was caught by Noah Romero. Well, and I tell you what, Blazik and Romero, what timing. Obviously, you get this done in preseason camp, but that's a back shoulder throw. That is as about as good as you can do it. You don't see it done this well at the collegiate level sometimes, but when you place that ball perfectly back shoulder, it's almost indefensible, and that was a great, great combination there. First and goal at the seven after the 11-yard pass play. Now Trosclair in the backfield with Blazik. And we have a whistle and a flag in the backfield. It's going to be a legal procedure on Turlings. Well, they wanted to be efficient in the passing game. So far tonight, Dane Chaponche has to love this opening drive for his squad. Yeah, they have. And, I mean, Blazik has been very proficient, efficient. He's uh, completed several passes here. He's obviously done a little bit with his legs. And now into the red zone, an opportunity to get the first score of the game. Inside the Livingston Parish Tourism Red Zone at the 12-yard line. A couple weeks ago, Turlings only threw for 48 yards and a loss to Catholic High out of Bat Rouge. Well, and although Coach Chaponche wants to run the ball, he was clear and talking to us. We're going to take what they give us, and thus far, the passing game has been where it's at. Blazik slings one for a few more yards, and it is caught on the far sidelines. The diving grab by Connor Talbot. Talbot and Romero are very similar. Good size possession receivers, while Lavalette and, and Champon more guys that can get big play big plays through the passing game. That's the 12th play of this drive. And it's last gone 74 yards off the left side. There's a couple yard gain. So third and goal. And they've been fairly decent on third down as that was Trasclair. It was averaging five yards a carry. The thing about this, when you're down to your opponent's five yard line and you're this close to the end zone, those windows in the passing game get much tighter. The field becomes much more compressed. And so some of those earlier passes, you, they, you know, they just won't be there. From the six yard line. Blazik to check with me to the sideline. Plenty of time on the play clock, 13 seconds. The running back is Judy's, who also plays a lot of defense for Turlins. Blazik lobs one to the back of the end zone, touchdown! Touchdown, Rebels! That was a smooth drive by Turlins Catholic. Cole Champagne in the end zone for the fourth time this season. Touchdown pass number 11 for Blazik. Well, in the, in, the, in the maturity by Blazik here is he showed you he has a great arm, but this time he shows you the touch. He sees his receiver, Champagne, wide open. He doesn't need to fire it in there. Just give him a catchable ball. It was a great route. Ensured that his receiver could come down with it. 
And you mentioned, Jeff, this was a big-time drive, opening drive by Turner. There's the competitor in that young man. The extra point is good. So Turling's Catholic in this rivalry game. A gentleman's rivalry, if you would. Turling's leading St. Thomas Moore seven to nothing. We'll see how the Cougars respond when we come back. This is game time on your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Louisiana's best barbecue is Podna's, smoked to perfection for fall-off-the-bone good eating. Podna's tailgate spread features ribs, chicken, pork, and two sides for only $24.85. That's right, feed three to five people for only $24.85. Available now through October 16th. Podna's, fast service for dine in or drive through, world famous baked beans, and party pack headquarters. Remember the brand, Podna's. Two locations, Florida Don Moore and Sherwood Forest at I 12. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Now get your camera ready, because this one should be a good one. And it's so far off to a good start, especially if you're Turling's Catholic, the Rebels leading St. Thomas Moore. How about that drive to begin the ball game for the Rebels? 14 plays, 82 yards. And the kick is into the end zone for Judy's. Yeah, I mean, Coach Chaponche, you know, this is probably, he couldn't have drawn it up any better. He comes out, gets a stop on defense. His offense gets the ball and pinned down kind of deep in his own territory and able to drive the length of the field. So he's got to be feeling good about his ball club right now. Let's see how STM can respond. Good news for them. Holstein is back out there. Remember, he took quite a shot on the third down pass play that was incomplete. Had the training staff come out and look at him before he was able to leave the field. They operate from their own 20 yard line and they'll go on the ground to Primo and Primo, boy, he was a step or two away from breaking a long run there. He's got some good speed, 4-4-6 speed over a thousand yards of offense last year for STM. In fact, he's 12th all time in school history in rushing yards with 764 career yards. Second and four, Holstein, quick pass, and nice defense there by Turlings. Bailey Prejean, who's their best cover corner, made the stop, bringing up another third down here for this STM offense. Yeah, third and short, and going to be in, always in these third and short. It's an interesting play call, interesting decision, whether you put the ball up in the air, keep it on the ground here, but obviously they need to keep the chains moving on this drive. There's Mason Payson, who's had a really good season on the year, nearly 20 catches. He's 14th in school history in receiving yards. Third and two on the ground. Primo, second effort gets him the first down. Well, that's just good good patience, good power, and good vision. It was not there initially. Kind of stayed with his blocks, trusting that offensive line and able to get to the edge and just get north and south. That's when you know what you need to pick up. Not trying to do too much, just making sure that my team gets the first down and we keep the chains moving. Last week, 25 first downs for St. Thomas Moore as they defeated Westgate 42-20 to in their district opener from the 32-yard line. Holstein, they set up the screen, it's knocked around and incomplete. Well, that's just dangerous, that's, that's one obviously. Holstein, sophomore, you know, he's gonna learn that when these plays are dead, just don't even release the ball into that traffic. Go ahead and, and you know, down that thing into the ground, but, but this, this had no chance and threw that ball into a lot of traffic. <laughs> And really fortunate that it didn't get turned over. Look at all the blue jerseys there. I mean, you just don't throw that ball. And, you know, those are, those are the kind that you'll, you'll watch on film and you'll just say, hey, let me just live to fight another play. Holstein has thrown just two interceptions on the season. Second down, he'll go back to the air. And it's caught. Finding a little seam in that defense was Luke Howard. That's only his third grab of the year. Close to the first down marker. He's a yard shy. Actually, they're going to say, no, yeah, he's a yard shy, right? Yep, yeah, he is. The uh, chain gain on the far side. 
Hackett started leaving. And the line judge says, hold on. Well, here's Holstein in the pocket, and this is where he's comfortable. I mean, that ball has, I mean, there's no wobble whatsoever. Shows you how much of a pure passer. He just threw that ball effortlessly to his tight end there, Luke Howard. Holstein, three of six for 25 yards in the game. Eye formation here for STM as they run the power eye. To, I think the forward progress is enough for a first down for the Cougars. Well, let's see. I mean, again, Chaponche, where he wants to improve some is on that defensive line. And he's got uh, he's got two, two twins kind of leading up the ends there, the McGuire boys. But it looks like uh, St. Thomas Moore was able to pick up another critical first down, keep the drive alive. Second first down on this drive for STM as they trail seven to nothing. The Cougars this season with their five and one record, a little trickery here. Payson is throwing and wide open, but dropping the ball at the top. What a play! Taking it down inside the red zone. Still on his oh feet. It's Grant Arsenal. Right place, right time. Well, this will make a highlight film somewhere. This ball was caught, then it was intercepted, and then it was caught again on this play. And, flag. And, <laughs> Wipe it out. Flag on the play. But I tell you what, I don't know that I've ever, ever seen the ball handled Holy this many times. By the offense, number 54, 10 yards. Still second down. But it was a it was a reverse. It was set up beautifully. The STM two wide receivers were actually open as they got drawn in thinking the run. But you'll see here, the balls just dropped. It wasn't caught cleanly. And then watch Turlins had a shot there. And then the St. Thomas Moore receiver, number 80, able to get in there, Grant Arsenault, and, and catch it. But Obviously, all for not, it's a flag. Usually, you don't want two wide receivers running <laughs> in the same area, but that time it worked out <laughs> yeah, for St. Right. Thomas Moore and then negated a 43-yard pass play. Well, I'm sure that's how they practice it, Jeff, <laughs> just in case you don't catch it. We're going to have another trailer yeah, there right, for right. you, you know? <laughs> that was a crazy play, but uh, it is wiped from the history books. First down and long, Holstein in trouble, and he goes down the sack. And that was what Chaponche wanted to see. Some pressure there as they get the sack for Turlins. In on that one was Garrett Russo, the linebacker. Yeah, and they're dialing up pressure. They're bringing it in. He, and Chaponche says he typically likes to blitz from the linebacker position. That time Russo was very close to the line of scrimmage. Just finding one of those holes right there, those gaps right there, able to get through it and bringing the quarterback down. Second tackle for a loss this season for Russo. What a first 12 minutes from Rebel Field here at Turlings. What a rivalry this is. St. Thomas Moore and Turlings Catholic, the defending champs in Division II. They'll have their hands full tonight. More coming up on Game Time. This is your view. Hi, I'm Layton Ricks, Livingston Parish President. Let me just tell you, I know we've suffered through the August flood, but we're coming back stronger than ever. Through tourism, through our sheriff's department, our schools, our homeland security department, our LEDC, through our commercial development, our real estate development, everything you came to Livingston Parish for, schools, all are still there doing more and bigger and better things than ever. Come on out to Livingston Parish. We're coming back. We are on the move. Livingston Parish is the place to be. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College, and we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's Top 30 Two-Year Technical Colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in, one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. Don't miss any of the action this season. All game time, high school football games stream live each week at yearview.com. Also check back throughout the week for game highlights and additional coverage, including the new weekly high school football recruiting podcast over the middle. Underway here in the second quarter from Rebel Field at the, on the campus of Turlings Catholic. That was second down and a long way to go. I think second and 37, and they get a 23-yard pass play. To Grand Arsenal. Well, obviously, Turlins is thinking, hey, look, we can't give up the big one here. So they were playing a little loose in coverage. And then again, you know, when 
when Holstein has time to throw it, this guy can really sling it, and that was a very accurate pass to Grant Arsenault, but they've still got a little about 12 or 13 yards to go to pick up a first down. Third down, Turlings brings the blitz, Holstein downfield, and a great grab. Mason Payson with the catch in the Turlings territory. Well, this is my first time seeing Holstein play, but he can really spin the football. It has been impressive, and this time he lays it out there. With great touch to pace on so that he could have an opportunity to come down with the ball, but just look how comfortable that, that motion in the pocket, and I mean, that ball is just placed absolutely perfect. Quick pass to the near side, and I think that's pace on again, and he gets a few yards that time, maybe about six. Pace on. Over 20 catches on the season. He's averaging 14 yards. Played a lot last season on that Division II state championship team. So he's the leading receiver coming back. Good hands, competitor. And he's made a couple of big plays already in this game. Second down and four as STM on the move now. Early in the second quarter down by seven. They hand the ball off to William Cryer. Open field tackle there by Dylan Longlane. First baseman on that state championship baseball team for Turlings Catholic. Well, we got some jaw jacking going on down there on the sideline. Payson's helmet's come flying off, and I mean, he's kind of saying, hey, the Turlings guy ripped it off, and obviously he's going to have to go take a seat for a play because that's the rule in high school football. But let's see if we can catch it here where the helmet comes off. Oh, there he is. He's got, Whoa, a, hey. he's got a handful of it, face mask, and you know, Turlings living right right now, and they're getting away with some with a couple of things right now. So uh, obviously that could have been a been a flag there. Logan Quimido had the hand in the cookie jar, but didn't get caught. They're going to throw on third and short. Zips it over the middle for, oh, did he hang on to it? Incomplete. Well, according to NFL rules, there's no way that's a catch, but obviously they... Luke they, Howard, a sophomore going over the middle, took quite a hit. Fourth and inches now. Yeah, just a drag right route by the tight end. Blazik wait for him to clear and threw it again. Perfect pass, and that's one you're hoping your big tight end can just hold on as he's falling down to the ground, but unable to keep possession and critical drop there. Hayden Judy's the physical defensive back there on the coverage. So now they're gonna let's see a little bit of confusion, or is this maybe part of the trickery maybe here on fourth and inches? Do they have enough? I don't think they got enough people on the on the field. Looks like they only got 10 out there. So we'll take a break. Big fourth down coming up for St. Thomas Moore. They're down by seven early in the second quarter. This is game time on your view. Time on your view. Central Ad Zachary live Friday at 7 p.m. Brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Sports in America is one of those rare things that brings it everybody together. When those lights come on, it doesn't matter what's been going on at home, at church, in the community, but just an amazing experience just to see the camaraderie that Friday nights bring. And that's why sports is such a valuable tool to society, to America. Fourth and inches, and the fan there, fourth Turlings Catholic, asking his fellow fans to get up on their feet, but Holstein on the quarterback draw gets the first down. Hey, fourth and one, you'd think he'd get a little more support than that, trying to get some of those fans up there, but obviously St. Thomas Moore picking up the first down, keeping this drive alive, and trying to see if they can tie this ball game up. So the drive continues inside the Pondas Barbecue Red Zone as you look at Jim Hightower, 43 years as a head coach. And he rides his bike about 43 miles a day. <laughs> First down and 10. And not much happening there on the read option as it's stuffed by that St. Thomas Moore line. Well, thus far, I've been impressed with both of these signal callers, these quarterbacks. You know, they've really completed some, some, some impressive throws and 
Now Holstein has an opportunity to try to get his team in the end zone. He's got six touchdown passes on the season. I formation here for Holstein. Play action fake as he rolls to the far side into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Double coverage there. Payson has got his hands up saying, hey, I was open on that play, but instead he was trying to get the football to Grant Arsenault. Well, this is one where he did try to do a little too much. The first bad decision I saw him make, Chris Primo was wide open in the flats, their talented running back, and that time he should have just checked it down to his running back and get positive yards on second down bringing up a third and, and much short and more manageable there. Trevor Robertson is the field goal kicker for St. Thomas Moore. His long is 24. We have whistles before the snap and we have a timeout for Turling. 9-10 to go before halftime. STM trying to tie this thing. Dane Chaponche hoping his defense can make a play on third down. We'll find out if they can do that when we come back on your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Hello, this is JT with Livingston Tourism. I just want to encourage you to come out and see us. We are just east of Baton Rouge on Interstate 12. We have Bass Pro, beautiful hotels, RV parks. So if you're looking for just a weekend getaway, you can come see us. Or if you're just traveling, stop by. We have restaurants, shopping, the Antique District, Juban Crossing, golf. Anything you want to do, we have it here in Livingston Parish. So come see us. For any of our events, you can visit us at livingstontourism.com or on social media. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Great night for high school football in Lafayette. Turling's Catholic leading St. Thomas Moore, 7 to nothing. STM has it inside the Turling's red zone, facing third down and eight. Holstein. Lobs one towards the back of the end zone. Did he get a foot down? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Mason Payson with a nice grab in the corner of the end zone. Well, first you got to give credit to that St. Thomas Moore offensive line. Holstein had all day to throw that football. And what he does, thus far, he's one of the best passers I've seen this season. It just throws a beautiful ball to the back of the end zone. Let's check on that foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's clearly down. Good concentration, good catch by Payson. The second one we've seen him make like that tonight. And there you go, St. Thomas Moore striking and getting on the board. Chance to tie the game up here. Turlings has given up too many big plays in the passing game this season. They gave up a couple during that drive, including on that touchdown pass. As St. Thomas Moore has tied it up with an impressive drive with 9.02 to go. We've already seen a 14-play drive, and now we got a 16-play drive. Game time on your view is brought to you by Ponda's Barbecue. Slow cook, fall off the bone perfection, and the best baked beans in America. And by Gary Lewis Properties. From apartments, condominiums, and townhomes, Gary Lewis Properties, a top provider in Baton Rouge of residential and commercial property for rent. And by ITI Technical College, your key to a better life. Well, the fans take a little bit of a breather here in what has been an outstanding contest. Well, and they knew it was going to be tough. I mean, after that first drive, yeah, it was great by Tones, but you knew St. Thomas Moore was not going to just lay down and go home. This is a good football team, and we expect a good one tonight. Robertson on the kick, taken at the seven-yard line for Turlings. Straight ahead, a little bit of a seam and a good return. That was Seth Lobelette, who's averaging 21 yards on his kickoff returns. He got 26 on that. So it's first and 10 now at the 33-yard line. So let's see what Turling's Catholic can do here. Wesley Blazik really had an outstanding opening drive of the night. That led the Rebels to a touchdown. He was on money. Offense hasn't changed much under Dane Chaponche to what you saw under 
Sonny Chaponche plays it off the left side. Stretches forward. Gets about seven. No, that's right. I mean, Chaponche said what they did was they actually, you know, they changed some of the terminology. They're calling the plays a little bit differently. So, so those are some of the nuances. But the nucleus of this offense and defense is, is still pretty much the same for Turley. Blazek looking over to the sideline. Now they run it with Garber. Garber gets bottled up, though, maybe a yard, trying that left side of the line. And there's a reason why they try to run on the left side. It's because of number 76 for Turlings. There you look at Thomas Perry. He is the LSU commitment, a junior. 320 pounds and then on the right side you got Justin Matthews there's a look at Thomas Perry his dad played at LSU so I would say he's probably a strong verbal commitment even though he's got another year Blazik on third down is shut down Paul Labor, the instinctive linebacker for the Cougars 63 tackles on the season a three-year starter makes a big play on third down well you talk about filling a hole and Blazik a big solid quarterback and that's how you do it by Paul Labor, just stepping up you know this is just going to be a one -on -one oh they're going right, so. for it on fourth down and on the fourth down call did they get it it's close what a gutsy call there Landon Trosclair on the pitch I think he's got it. Yeah, it looks close. Looks How about close. that? They're already moving the chains, and that's what happens when you come out. Great call. A lot of credit for having the guts to get lined up quickly, snap the ball, get it back there to Tross Clare, your bigger back, and see if he can get the first down for you. Turling's now two for two on third down conversions, or fourth down conversions. There is a flag. Dead ball, false start. Number two on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Well, that's rolling the dice early. <laughs> yeah, you give up the football there. St. Thomas Moore just put together a, a pretty hot drive and you know, that's taking a pretty big gamble, but obviously you know what's at stake here in this football game and you need as many possessions as you can. Turley's Catholic playing without Ja'Kairi Jornet. A terrific running back that they have. They're missing him. Blazik winding up, throwing downfield. This is going to go for six. Set, level it. Rebels back in the end zone. Well, 61 yards. You have to appreciate a game of good quarterback play. And we're seeing some outstanding quarterback play here tonight. And again, Blazik says, okay, Holstein, whatever you can do, I will match it. And he just threw a beautiful ball that Lavalle, all he had to do was put his hands out there because it was thrown perfectly. Watch here, has plenty of time. And I mean, he just throws a dart right there to Lavalle. Defensive back had great coverage, just a better throw and able to get into the end zone. I think Jude Joseph, the defensive back, got a fingertip on that one. The extra point try coming up. And it's good for Judy's who's now 20 of 23 on the extra points. Does Joseph get a finger on that? Tough to tell. Regardless, it's another touchdown for Turling. Stay tuned, more coming up. This is game time on your view. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast friendly claims, but do you wanna be a legend? You gotta get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's gonna keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks. I'm good. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College, and we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's Top 30 Two-Year Technical Colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. Evan, how about that? How about that? As uh, it looks like they got the great terrific touchdown catch. The Lavalette 
five plays, 67 yards on your scoring drive, brought to you by Gary Lewis Properties. This ball will get into the end zone, as Judas has been good with that tonight. So STM now will start a drive from their own 20-yard line on the student section side of Turnley's Catholic. Dane Chaponche, this is not his first head coaching job. He was the head coach at Appaloosa's Catholic in 2014 and 15. Last year, he was the offensive coordinator at Cecilia. But he uh, graduated from Turlings in 2002. He was mostly a basketball track guy, though. He only played one season of football. And he takes over a program that is a consistent winner because of his dad and what he did over 22 years. Not much running room on that pass play. And actually, they may have lost a yard. And on the stop there for Turlings was Jake McGuire, and there is a STM player down on the ground. Yeah, I think that's William Cryer down there on the ground, and hopefully he's okay. Looked like he may have took one in the thigh uh, when they came up to make the tackle. And let's see if he can walk it off there. He lost a yard on that pass play. The defensive coordinator for Turlings is Brady Taylor. Even though Dane Chaponche took over, not much changes on this coaching staff. Kept it uh, pretty much the same thing. Eight starters are back on this defense. The thing about Chaponche, a young guy, but very mature for, for his age and doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, and just kind of an even keel guy. Another pass play that's completed for a first down. Having a big game already is J.P. Robertson. Had a 53-yard touchdown catch last week against Plaquemine. 16-yard reception there. But I tell you what, if you're playing DB in this game and you leave a wide receiver open, these both of these quarterbacks, they're going to hit him. Four down lineman for Turlings. Holstein over the middle, and it's caught. Pace on, though, runs into a couple of rebel defenders. Did the ball come out? Turling says they have it, but the referee says he was down. Well, let's see here. I saw the Turlings defender is at 43 there. Bryant Mason going for the strip. I'm not sure if he's the one who went for the strip, but when Payson caught the football, they were clearly trying to strip it out. And let's see if we can catch it on the replay and see if the ball comes out. But you're going to see a little crossing route here by Payson. And here is where they try to strip. You can see he's oh, working on that man. ball. Well, 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 well. Well, Turlings got one earlier. So, uh, this they all time, even out over they all the even, uh, that's right. <laughs> this time, St. Thomas Moore, fortunate oh. to get one. It was earlier. Turlings threw a backwards pass that they recovered. This time, St. Thomas Moore able to retain possession. Holstein's got to run it, and I think he's got enough for a first down. There was nobody open downfield. And let's send it down to the field in Jessica Province. Jessica? Jeff, coming to you with the peak performance injury update. We just saw another STM player go down, William Cryer. That's another one, and they don't need to add to that list as they are out with senior quarterback Peyton Landry. He is in a right arm sling, but he is still remaining very active and very vocal on the sideline, following his team and his players and giving them motivation throughout the timeouts. Yeah, Peyton Landry, the emotional leader of this offense, who has um, put up some good numbers himself, a high percentage of passes completed he got banged up last week and he's got a right arm injury the four touchdown passes and then he brings the running element to this offense a good runner especially on rollouts well they had three quarterbacks coming into the season they wasn't really much separation Landry and Holstein obviously merged but the way Holstein is playing today I haven't seen Landry play but he must be one gifted quarterback screen play but on the stop was Bo LeBlanc Bo LeBlanc is back out there as you see Landry you see Peyton Landry there not going to be as big and sort of the you know big pocket passer that Holstein is but obviously brings a different dimension helps with that running game and you know the way Holstein's playing he must be one heck of a quarterback as well if it's kind of even competition. Third and four, another pass over the middle, juggled and dropped. On terrific coverage is Bailey Prejean, first year starter who Coach Dane Chaponche said, he seems like he's been starting for two years. So confident. Out well, there. he's their best cover corner. You mentioned it, and right there comes in there, and really, Arsenault just has to come down with that football. Another beautifully thrown ball there by Holstein, and that was actually enough to pick up the first down. All you had to do is run your route to the chains there and catch the football, but he dropped it. STM will go for it on fourth down. 
three wide receivers. Now he's going to back up. Looks like he's going to punt it. And it's a line drive punt. Will it die inside the 10? And yes, it will. Perfectly executed there by Caleb Holstein. A 44-yard punt, and Turlings will start this next drive deep in their own territory late in the second quarter. I'll tell you what, that little play has turned into one of my favorite plays in football. Brings the return guys up and able to get the football down. Turlings leading St. Thomas Moore, 14-7. Jim Hightower looking for a defensive stand when we come back. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the blue chip athlete to blue collar worker. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Time on your view. Central at Zachary live Friday at 7 p.m. Brought to you by ITI Technical College for a better life. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone. From those who serve aces to those who serve others. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. Getting you back in the game of life. There's a look at Jim Hightower, and what a terrific thing for him last December to finally bring home that state championship to St. Thomas More, their first in program history. It's the second state championship for Jim Hightower. He also won a state championship with Catholic Point Capi in 1978. Turling's running, and not much of a pickup there off the left side. Well, Turlings has to be thinking, okay, we've got a seven-point lead. Obviously, our crosstown rival, district rival, and, you know, we don't want to make a mistake this deep in our own territory. So there, I, I would imagine them to play these first couple of plays pretty conservative before you just turn Blazik loose, throwing the football. Second and eight. Check with me on the sideline. Clock underneath three minutes. Inside give and a hard, oh my gosh, what a hard run there by Xander Garber as he was getting thrown around. Like a ping pong ball oh, in there, man. man. But they say he's tough, he's not, he's obviously smaller in stature than the other backs, but does a good job eluding uh, uh, rushers and, and tacklers and really just keeping his legs going. But here you go, and look at it, just doesn't go down. I mean, just spinning off the of tacklers, that's, that's one tough kid right there. 80-yard touchdown run against Catholic High earlier this season. A big third down coming up here for Turlings. They're 3-3 three three on the season with losses to Rummel. Catholic High and Notre Dame, that is nothing to sneeze at. That's some pretty good competition. Blazik rolling out. Is there enough room for him to run? And he's going to go down. St. Thomas Moore, great pursuit of the football. Brandon Gannon, one of the men there. That would be his fourth sack. He had a huge game against Como this year where he had eight tackles and a sack, and an athletic player on that defensive line who moves very well for six foot three, 235 pounds. Well, they don't have a punter out on the field, so uh, they got to get a punter out there. But I tell you what, Jeff, this all goes back to the punt that Holstein made, and when they thought that they might have been going for it, St. Thomas Moore, they did that little quick pooch punt, able to pin Turlins back in their own territory deep, and that's why you've seen these conservative calls here by Chapon Shane. Obviously, getting the time out there, got to get a punter out on the football field. Well, they wanted to milk as much clock as they could, and so it's now down to seven minutes and 28 seconds. Now, the danger here is what you're telling your team on the sideline is let's concentrate on the snap. We've got to have a good snap. Punter, your job is to catch the football and get it off. Don't worry about anything else because this deep in your territory, if any of that malfunctions, St. Thomas Moore likely ends up with points. Jim Hightower, 68 years old, turned 69 in December. Last December, he won a state championship for St. Thomas Moore as they defeated Parkview Baptist 54 to 29. What a game for Nate Cox, the quarterback for the Cougars, through six touchdown passes. That is a state championship record. 
It was a tough start to the season for STM, if you remember. They lost three of their first five games, but they eventually got it going, and they got more healthier as the season went along and ended up bringing home some hardware when it was all said and done. Here's the punt. Not a great punt. High, short, and it takes an STM bounce. Look at this thing. Down at the 19-yard line. Wow. Only a nine-yard punt. Not what the doctor ordered there if you're Turling. Well, and we've seen these games on turf now. The ball either bounces really far one way or the other. We saw one get a good kick forward. This time, the ball gets a bad kick backwards. There's a penalty on the on the field against Turlins, and I'm sure St. Thomas Moore will just decline this and take the excellent field position. Well, it all started with that great punt by Caleb Holstein to back Turlins up inside their 10, and now Caleb Holstein will do what he's more comfortable doing, and that's playing quarterback. <laughs> As this drive will start inside the Pondas Barbecue Red Zone. But it wasn't a bad punt either. <laughs> Holstein to the end zone, single coverage, and it's knocked away. What great defense there on the near sideline by Bailey Prasia. Two interceptions on the year, nearly had a third. Well, that time I thought Robert actually stepped out of bounds. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. I don't know if it would have counted anyway. I, well, can't see his feet there, but I thought maybe the back there had forced Prejean had forced uh, Robertson out of bounds. Second and 10. Primo in the backfield. Holstein all day to throw, and that's a tough pass to complete. Long way to go there as he was trying to get it to Luke Howard. Great coverage by Cross Guillory, and all of a sudden it's third down. Yeah, they had a crossing route that time set up with Luke Howard just a deep out. One of those where you really have to just float it in there. Very tough pass to complete, but good job there by the linebackers for Turlings, staying with their receivers. STM is four for seven on third downs. Holstein throws back, and here we go. Luke Howard, not much running room. Nicely defended there by Turlings. Bailey Prejean in on the stop, or was that... Dylan Long on it. And at the, um, before the game during warm-ups, both of these teams have kickers that were kicking the ball decent and could make it from this area on the field. So I know it's decision time again for St. Thomas Moore, but it looks like they're gonna keep their offense out on the field. They decide against the 34-yard field goal. Holstein on fourth down. Towards the end zone, knocked away! Great defensive play near the goal line, Hayden Judice. Well, Hayden Judice, he goes both ways for him. He's their big stud on the football team because he's capable of doing so many things. And the thing I like about this play mostly is Judice had the, the, the knowledge to know, just knock the football down. I don't need to try to make an interception because it's fourth down. And so that's what he does. He knocks the football down ensures that the receiver can't make a play on the ball. All still almost comes down with the interception and down a turnover on downs. And Turlins back with the football. Turlings in one timeout starts this drive from their own 17 yard line. And Blazik will throw. Must Man wide open, nobody there. And Must they overshot him. Well, that's because Blazik's on his back back there. You're wondering, okay, how do you miss somebody? You're running back that wide open well that was garber but blazik was facing a lot of pressure and really threw that ball before he wanted to because if he had time that's one that you would think he would complete there but that was just blown coverage and a missed opportunity there for turley blazik started a couple games last year threw for three touchdown passes last week here's the screen and it's a dangerous play that should be an incompletion, and they finally blow the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> They're not ready to give up yet. I, I want to get the ball, get the end zone. But again, that was a, a, a screenplay that had a lot of defenders around it and very fortunate there as it kind of bounced out of his running back's hand and almost picked off there. Third down and 10. STM quickly gets their defense set here. Four wide receivers here. Well, STM might get another chance with the ball before this halftime is, or this first half is completed. 
Back up, boss. Back up. Both teams have kind of a, abandoned the running game, wouldn't you say? And I understand it's late in the first half, but Trasquare in the backfield here for Turlings. Blazik to throw. Maybe he might run. Now, oh, what a catch over the middle. But then drop, ball on the ground. Still Turlings football as Romero made the catch. And it is a Turlings first down. As Seth Lavalette, who had the long touchdown catch earlier in the game, R fell on the football. Romero, good looking. They got a lot of height, and they're very fortunate here. Both teams, you know, having trouble hanging on to the football after you complete it, and you got to tuck that football, and may have had a knee down anyway. Blazing escapes trouble. Lobs one deep, and it's incomplete to Connor Talbot. Well, we have seen more passes downfield in this game than we've seen all season long. Well, both of these teams saying they want to run the football, but I tell you what, as you mentioned, Jeff, they're coming out slinging this and, you know, really testing the defensive backs of both teams. And that time, a battle out there with Talbot out on the, on the fringes and not able to come down with the football. Second down. 22 seconds left before halftime. Five seconds on the play clock. Here comes the pressure again, and Blazik that time just has to get rid of it. He got hit by Brennan Romero. Well, 17 seconds left, and you, you know, uh, St. Thomas Moore realizes it's probably an obvious passing down, so you know you can begin to dial up the pressure a little bit and, you know, put more pressure on the quarterback in these more obvious go, passing back downs. Back up, back up. Let's see if they run the ball just to end this first half. Oh, he did not expect the snap, but Turlings is living right tonight. <laughs> i tell you what, he was looking at the sideline. Apparently the center did not know that, and that ball was snapped right into his gut, and he didn't even see it coming. But I, I think they may take your advice now, Jeff. That was very close. Hey, let's, we're up by seven. Let's not make, do anything stupid like oh, this. Boy. And fortunate it hit his hand and obviously he kind of was aware there and able to get on the football but that was golly look at there <laughs> almost right before the half you go give STM a chance to get points out seven seconds STM used its final timeout now the key here if you're Turlings you got to get this snap off now you, what you almost could do here, Jason, is run around a little bit. Run around and just throw yep. a, a deep pass and see if you can't get seven seconds off the clock instead of having a bad snap on a punt or a block punt. Yeah, if you could run around a little bit here and then maybe even on the... Well, Caleb uh, Winnington, the punter yeah. for Turlings, is out there. Yeah. Well, you got, again, you got to concentrate on getting this football out. Really, you don't want to... You don't want to punt it in bounds. I, I would think that you kind of want to angle this thing and don't give them a chance to chance to return it. Your STM, why don't you just put 11 guys yeah, on, the on the line? Yeah, on the line, that's right. Try to, oh, there oh, it is. Oh, a high snap, that's what we were talking about. Winnington's got a fall on it for a safety. Are you kidding me? Well, I know they wish they would have run the ball down a couple more times. That's Chaponche shaking his head and saying, Golly, man, these last couple of plays, they, we just we just shot ourselves in the foot. And here's why you often see teams towards the end of the half, particularly if you're up, just run it a few times and take it into the half and maybe trying to do a bit too much here for Turlins and you end up, instead of going up by seven into the tunnel, you end up giving up a safety and now have to kick the ball back to St. Thomas Moore with six seconds left on the clock. There's the snapper, Noah Romero, the senior, and it was just a little too high there. Well, you're a former kicker, Jason. I mean, sometimes Romero's obviously accepting blame for those two points given up, but almost like, and you're a golfer too, it's almost like don't hook this or don't slice this. And he's probably telling himself, don't snap it over his head. That, I was thinking the same thing, you know, when they go to the sideline, the coach is just, hey, I just need a good snap. I need a good yeah. snap. And now they're focused and they're a little more tense on getting that snap off. And sometimes when you concentrate on it or you think about it too much, it becomes mental. And, you know, just a bad snap. We see that so often in critical times of the game. 
I think they're going to take a couple more seconds off the game clock based on what one of our field mics picked up. They said there should be four. Well, in here, if you're if you're um, Turlins, you you probably want to look at squibbing this ball. You don't want to kick it deep or give any of St. Thomas More's skill players an opportunity to get a good return here. So the thought is squib it, try to get some one of those up guys to pick it up and a lot of time run off the clock and maybe get into the half. Turlings will get the ball to start the second half. But what was a seven point lead down to five. be a conversation I think they're wondering again there was seven seven seconds when the ball was snapped and only one second came off the clock and maybe there's a discussion over yeah you would think that play took longer than one second and particularly by the time he fell on yeah. it in the end zone. It's not like in basketball where the clock doesn't start until you get the inbounds pass. As soon as he snaps the ball, right. the clock should be ticking. Well, I guess they mean now the kicking ball. Or kicking ball. Ball ball. Well, Darn ball kickers, man. <laughs> so needy, Jeff. Right, I know what it's like to have you look. You got your kicking ball, man. It's the one that you've kind of broken in and feel most comfortable with. But honestly, you know, you got to be thinking you're going to squib this football anyway. So there is four seconds. Well, the ball boy did not think he'd get some TV time. Today. Well, he's got a lot of pressure on him right now. I mean, you you got to distinguish kicking balls from quarterback balls. And I don't know, maybe he's got some of that stuff written on his wrist down there. But they're bringing in some backup help there. Look. <laughs> So there is four seconds yeah. on the clock. On, All right, here we go. End over end kick. Cover it, cover it. Set to be returned by Chris Primo. He's got some good speed. This is the final play of the first half. Primo to the 40. Breaks one tackle, and then he's finally taken down at the 43-yard line. And an exciting first half from Rebel Field on the campus of Turlings Catholic High School comes to an end. The Rebels three and three on the season, leading the St. Thomas Moore Cougars, ranked number five in class 4A. 14 to nine is the score. Let's send it down to the field and Jeff's from Robbins. Jeff, thanks so much. Coach, a back and forth ball game that you've been able to respond to. What have you been impressed with so far? I think we were able to stay balanced on offense a little bit better. Uh, we missed one opportunity for a big play. Hopefully it didn't come back to bite us, but we got to run the ball better in the second half. Sorry, you're going to make it to your lead. Uh, we got to run the ball better in the second half, and we got we to gotta shut down their passing game. We had them second and 36, and they converted it. We can't let that happen. What's going to be your message to your team in your locker room? Keep playing hard. Keep doing what you're doing. We get the ball first. We got to score. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you. Jeff. They're playing very hard in this football game. St. Thomas Moore trailing by five, 14 to nine. We'll take a deep breath. The Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance Halftime Show coming up. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast friendly claims, but do you want to be a legend? You got to get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's going to keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks. I'm good. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College, and we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's Top 30 Two-Year Technical Colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. 
the Game Time Halftime Show brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance ready to serve you with auto insurance, homeowners insurance, life insurance, and more. Real service, real people. Our halftime score from Rebel Field on campus of Turlings Catholic High School. The Rebels leading the St. Thomas Moore Cougars 14 to 9 in a first half that saw a lot of action, a lot of passing in this football game. You heard Dane Chaponche said they want to get back to the running game a little bit more. I would think that's the message for both teams in this contest. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. I think that's the one area that they've been defunct on offense, just haven't been able to get the run game going. But both teams give them credit for having shut the run up, shut the run down and bringing people to the line of scrimmage, kind of opening up the passing game. But I think both of these teams are going to try to get the running game going in the second half. Earlier this week, our Jessica Province had a chance to talk to one of our fine sponsors of Game Time on Your View. That's Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Take it away, Jessica. Thanks so much, guys. Joined now by some of our wonderful friends at Peak Performance Physical Therapy. I'm here with Chris Purvis. And Chris, we see Peak Performance out on the field every Friday night, helping the athletes, getting them back out on the field. But today we're in the clinic with some behind the scenes action that you guys take care of on a week to week basis. What does that look like for some of our athletes? Well, yeah, Jessica, when we're, you know, when we're on the field helping with the athletic trainers, with the sports medicine team, it's more of an emergency management type stuff. Okay. You know, we get to check the kids out on the field. Not a lot of treatment takes place there, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of diagnosing and trying to figure out if somebody can go back to play. Um, you know, we deal with the issues like concussions and heat illness and cramping and stuff like that. But, you know, during the week is where we do most of our work with the athletes. Okay. We get ankle sprains. We get muscle pulls and strains, a lot of that this time of year. We have knee injuries and shoulder injuries. But the, the, the vast majority of what we do as, as part of the sports medicine team, as mm -hmm. physical therapists, mm -hmm. is work with these kids during the week to try to get them ready to be able to play on Friday night. Now we see peak performance week in and week out, like you mentioned, at the games and here at the clinic, they're visiting you guys, but that's a partnership that has continued to grow strong year after year. Tell me a little bit about what makes that partnership so special and how it works. Well, it's just a great way for us to be able to, to be a part of the community. We all love football. A lot of our therapists that cover at the games have played football. They love being out there. We get to work, like I said, as part of the sports medicine team. So we just support the school. Mm -hmm. We get to support the physicians. You know, some schools have physicians there, some don't. Some schools have athletic trainers on the sidelines. Some of them don't. So we try to be a resource for the school and a resource for the kids. And, you know, nobody likes to deal with injuries. That's the, the, the bad part of sports, but they obviously happen. And thank goodness most of them are fairly minor. Mm -hmm. And we can address those things in the clinic. And it's just great for us to be able to, to you know, walk out on a Friday night or to up the paper on a Saturday morning and read about one of our patients and you know playing well in a game. Yep. Getting athletes back out on the field week in and week out. Chris Purvis, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Guys, back to you. The St. Thomas Moore cheerleaders on the field entertaining the folks here at Rebel Field. Turlings Catholic leading St. Thomas Moore in an entertaining football game. This is game time on your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the blue chip athlete to blue collar worker. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. If your business is looking for growth opportunities in the capital region, find out why Livingston Parish is the place to be. We have available sites, tremendous access to and from your facility, we have an excellent workforce pipeline, and our quality of life is second to none. To find out more, contact our office at 225-686-3982 or visit our website at ledc.net. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast, friendly claims, but do you want to be a legend? You got to get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's going to keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks. I'm good. 
You can live the dream life right now at Summa Crossing Apartments in Livingston Parish. Imagine luxurious and affordable living where it is safe and the school systems are awesome. A quiet community with a private, well-stocked lake and a cool, relaxing swimming pool. Easy access for Baton Rouge commuters or students at Southeastern. It's not a dream, it's real and waiting for you. Come see Summa Crossing, exit 19 on I-12. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone. From those who serve aces to those who serve others. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. Getting you back in the game of life. Stadium in Lafayette, Louisiana, where the Turlings Catholic Rebels are leading the St. Thomas More Cougars 14 to 9. And I tell you what, we're all here to watch a wonderful football game, but it's not just about football. It's not just about the X's and O's. There's a little bit that goes on in the classroom as well. And right now, we're going to talk to our students of the week. I have Annalie Scheffler from St. Thomas More and Reed Broussard from Turlings Catholic. Anna Grace, I'm going to start with you. I apologize. Anna Grace, I got you covered this time. What grade are you in? I'm a senior. And what are you involved in? I'm senior class president and STM, an STM ambassador, editor-in-chief of the newspaper, um, Beta Club, and campus ministry. So you're involved in quite a few things. Yes. So what's your ultimate goal? What do you have? Do you have college plans? Um, yes, I am going to attend LSU next year, and hopefully I will be majoring in political communications with a, market, with a minor in marketing. So what's your dream job? I would like to be a lawyer or maybe work in the Capitol. Very good. Now, what about your favorite part of STM? My favorite part about STM, I think, is the people. You know, we really are a big family, and everyone's just so loving and uh, welcoming. What does it mean to receive this award? I mean, they've got lots of wonderful students over there and a wonderful student section. Yes, so many great people. It means a lot because I really respect the um, administration and all the faculty, so it means a lot for them to choose me for this award. Well, congratulations. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Switching gears now to Reed Broussard. Reed, what grade are you in? I'm in 12th grade. I'm a senior. Very good. And what about college plans for you? I'm going to UL, and I'm going to major in political science with a minor in communications. Okay, so as two communication people, look, y'all are the right people for this job for interviews. What's your goal? Uh, I want to be a campaign manager. Very neat. Any, any certain field you want to go in in that? Uh, just politics, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, what about your favorite part of Turlings Catholic? My favorite part is the community and the spirit. We all love our school, and we all love each other. Do you have a favorite teacher? Uh, I can't say, uh, they, them. yeah, all of them, one of them might get mad. <laughs> Very good. Hey, I, I completely understand. We got to keep those days going our senior year. Yeah. Reed, congratulations to you. you. Well, I'll tell you what, students can't be in the classroom without teachers leading the way. So let's take a minute and join our teachers of the week brought to you by ITI and Crown Trophy. Two wonderful men joining me now. I have Mr. John Dupuy of St. Thomas More and Mr. Craig Wall of Turlings Catholic. John, I'm gonna start with you. What do you teach at St. Thomas More? I teach environmental science and biology. Okay, and what grade? Uh, so, uh, 12th grade for environmental science and sophomores for biology. Very good, and what makes your classroom unique? Uh, we do a lot of hands-on. We uh, do aquaponics, which is a form of hydroponics where the uh, fish water actually feeds the uh, plants. So we grow lettuce and other vegetables in the, in the classroom. It's, it's a great experience. The kids love it. I think I need to go back to school. Now, all broadcasts, we've been talking about how close-knit both of these schools are, and y'all actually know each other. Can you tell me the relationship? Actually, it goes back to some days before teaching. We uh, both worked at a radio station together. No way! Yes. So we've got two students in communication and two guys that were in radio. Perfect for this interview. What about your favorite part of St. Thomas More? Oh, it's just the, um, the supporting of, the, of the, the staff that we have and the administration and just the students. It's just I love what I do and loving the students. It just, it's, I want to go to work every day. It's, it's a dream job. Well, thank you for your impact that you make on a daily basis. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Switching gears now to Craig. Craig, what do you teach at Turlings Catholic? Well, I teach U.S. history and world history, so it's mainly juniors and seniors. Okay. Yep. And what about that age group of kids? What made you pick them? They, I especially like the juniors because they're really motivated. Junior year is a big year. Uh -huh. uh, I love my seniors as well, but I always tell them, don't let the senioritis hit till at least December. Right. Can I at least get half a year? Right. Uh, but no, they're great to get to know before they head off. And uh, earlier tonight, I got to see a bunch that came back for this game. And that's one thing neat about this game. It brings all the old ones back. So um, I just really enjoyed the, that, those two years in particular. And you've got a big event coming up in the next couple of weeks that, that you need some help for. Oh, absolutely. I'm also the uh, speech and debate coach along with Ariel Lachelet here at Turlings. And uh, we've got a great program. It's got a very proud history. 
Uh, we do a speech and debate tournament here at Turlings uh, every October, and it's two weeks from today, October 27th and 28th. Uh, we'll have people from, uh, uh, students from all over Lafayette Parish, from all over the state, some of the most dedicated and hardworking kids you'll ever meet. Come see them perform. They love to show off. Uh, we need judges, no experience necessary, okay. and we're not above bribing you. We have great food in our judges' there lounge, you <laughs> uh, and you're welcome to it when you come on by and give us a couple of rounds. So uh, get in touch with me here at Turlings. I'd love to see you. That's exactly what I was going to say. How can they reach out to you? Uh, my email, if I guess I'll go ahead and get that, uh, letter C, wall, at tchs.net, or just give Turlings a call, and I'll get the message. Very good. And what about your favorite part of Turlings, Catholic? It is really a joy to work with the people I do here. They talk about Turlings being a family, and it, I've been really fortunate in most of the places I've worked. That's what it's been like, and this place is even more so. Uh, there's no drama behind the scenes. Everyone gets along. They support each other. The, the administration treats you like a professional. It's just it's an amazing place to work. I really enjoy my time here. Well, just like John, thank you for the impact that you make on a daily basis and touching all these lives. We appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. All right, Turlings Catholic and St. Thomas More wouldn't be possible without the teachers and the classrooms and the students to lead the way. Coming up next, the guys will break down the first half stats and highlights. Keep it right here. Attention to detail makes the world go round. At Baker Printing, our approach to the printing business is very simple. Treat it as if it were your own. That's not always an easy job, but it comes from the top down in our company. We thrive on the unique jobs. Bottom line, we take care of our customers' projects as if they were our very own. At Baker Printing, attention to detail makes our world go round. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast, friendly claim, but do you want to be a legend? You got to get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's going to keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks. I'm good. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College, and we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's top 30 two-year technical colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in, one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. Louisiana's best barbecue is Podna's, smoked to perfection for fall off the bone good eat. Podna's tailgate spread features ribs, chicken, pork, and two sides for only $24.85. That's right, feed three to five people for only $24.85. Available now through October 16th. Podna's, fast service for dine-in or drive through world-famous baked beans, and party pack headquarters. Remember the brand, Podna's. Two locations, Florida, Don Moore, and Sherwood Forest at I-12. Back on the Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance Halftime Show on Game Time. You're watching Year View as we are from Rebel Field tonight in Turling, at Turlings Catholic in Lafayette, Louisiana. And our score is 14-9. to Turlings Catholic leading St. Thomas Moore in a game that has had numerous big plays in it, Jason. It's been a lot of fun to watch. No, it has, and we've seen phenomenal quarterback yeah. play. Both of these quarterbacks can really toss it, and that's what made it, has made this game fun. And... What I think is going to happen, though, is that both of these teams are going to want to try to establish a little bit more of the running game to complement the passing game. Maybe grind it out a little bit more in the second half. Both teams were throwing the football all over the place in the first 24 minutes. Let's take a look at your first half highlights. And Turlings Catholic got off to a really good start as a touchdown pass here. Wesley Blazik finding Cole Champagne in the end zone. And the good pressure on the quarterback, one of the things that they wanted to do here tonight was the pressure the quarterback. Garrett Russo with the sack, but St. Thomas Moore would come back to tie it. The touchdown pass to Mason Payson, and then Blazik dials this one up and perfectly thrown pass to Seth Lavalette for the touchdown, his third of the season, but a crucial mistake at the end of the first half. The snap goes over the punter's head, Caleb Winnington, and it turns into two points for St. Thomas Moore on the safety. Let's look at your first half stats in this one. 
And it's not too many high school football games you see where the passing yardage is so much more than the rushing yards. No, you're right. I mean, both these quarterbacks have played well. There's been some balls that have hit the turf, and it's really been that in field position, uh, you know, has been the difference in this ball game right now. But you get the sense that, you know, whoever gets hot is likely the team that's going to continue with the momentum here. So. No turnovers in that first half. When we come back, we'll have second half kickoff from Turling's Catholic High School. The Rebels leading the Cougars 14 to nine. This is game time on your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College. And we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's top 30 two-year technical colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. Hi, I'm Layton Ricks, Livingston Parish President. Let me just tell you, I know we've suffered through the August floods, but we're coming back stronger than ever through tourism, through our Sheriff's Department, our schools, our Homeland Security Department, our LEDC, through our commercial development, our real estate development. Everything you came to Livingston Parish for, schools, all are still there doing more and bigger and better things than ever. Come on out to Livingston Parish. We're coming back. We are on the move. Livingston Parish is the place to be. Welcome to Monogram Express, a unique embroidery boutique specializing in personalized and one-of-a-kind gift ideas. Gifts for babies, children, ladies, and even men, we have you covered. Equipped with state-of-the-art embroidery machines, along with an experienced, client-focused staff serving you six days a week. Check out the area's largest selection of letters, designs, and thread colors. We're your one-stop embroidery shop. Handling personal, corporate, team, and school logos, and you're welcome to bring in your own items. Conveniently located at 2109 Veterans. Monogram Express makes your ordinary gifts extraordinary. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Second half set to begin from Turlings Catholic High School with the Rebels leading the St. Thomas Moore Cougars 14 tonight. Jeff Palermo, Jason DeQuer, and Jessica Province on the sidelines for what has been a thrilling football game so far through 24 minutes. Looking forward to seeing what the next 24 will bring us. This will be into the end zone for a touchback. So Turling's Catholic. They had a grinded out type of drive on their first offensive drive of the night that resulted in a touchdown pass from Wesley Blazing. And then a long bomb for the second touchdown pass to Sep Lavalette. And if Coach Chaponche had a mulligan, the only one I think he would ask for is towards the end of that half, it got a little sloppy. It had the, you know, the high snap and St. Thomas Moore able to get a safety. And knowing that you're going to get the ball in the second half, maybe you would have played it a little bit more conservatively. Blazek on the first play for the second half off the left side and St. Thomas Moore waiting for him. They stop him after a gain of only a couple of yards. Right. You see Blazek with those two big braces on both of his legs. And I tell you what, Jeff, when he carries the ball, there's nothing fancy about it. I mean, it is just north and south and a lot of power coming at you. You almost think about some of those big Tim Tebow type runs. Second down and eight. Check with me on the sideline. Four wide receivers in this offensive set for the Rebels with Xander Garber in the backfield. Back to the air, Blazik over the middle, caught. First down, Connor Talbot. And the passing game continues to click for Turlings. Well, it looks like uh, Lavalle may have, maybe uh, that wasn't Lavalle, I'm sorry, that was uh, Talbot. Talbot that caught the ball, he came out holding his leg. Watch, you'll see here when, when Talbot catches it, he comes out a little gingerly there, but another good throw by Blazik and continuing to maintain his you know ability to really connect with his receiver he's hot 
Turling's averaging 133 passing yards a game. They're well above that already in this game with 150 so far for Blazik. They go back to the ground and pick up a couple of yards. There you look at those numbers again. And last week in a win over Rain, that snapped a three-game losing streak for Turlings. He threw for three touchdown passes and 210 yards. We saw him last year in a game against Catholic High. He had to make a spot start because of injuries. And he was efficient in that game, too, 16 of 23 and threw a touchdown pass. Now he's a year older and wiser, and he's even better. Well, let's see if they decide to run the ball here a little bit more. They ran it on first down. They will on a design run. And getting around the end is Blazek. Jude Joseph, a high tackle there. The coaching staff for Turlings wanted a face mask penalty, but that will not happen. Well, and I like the call because now it gives you a third and short situation. And it's keeping St. Thomas more honest with the blitz and trying to get to Blazek. And, and, and putting some pressure on him. Third and three. Blazik following his blockers. Did he get there? No, he did not. That play got shut down by Paul Laborde. He's a yard shy of the first down. We've seen Turlings go for it on fourth down from their side of the territory. Let's see if they'll do that again, and I think they will. The punt game has not been very good tonight for the Rebels. Well, how about that? After the big first down completion, you come back with three straight runs, and Let's see if they're actually going to go for this thing. 14 seconds on the play clock. It's fourth and a short two for Turlings. They will. Plays it. Oh, I think he got it. I think he got it. Despite the penetration into the backfield by St. Thomas Moore, Elliott Roundtree had his hands on him but could not stop him before he gets a first down and they move the chains. Well, that's just a smart play by Blazik, knowing that he's about to hit the turf and has the wits to stretch that football out beyond the chains to pick up the first down. Turlings three of four on fourth downs tonight. We still got a long way to go in this game and they've already converted three times on fourth down. First and 10. Good run there by Garber off the right side, but not much room there as he was shut down on the play by Gregory Matuk, who's a cousin of Detroit Tiger Mikey Matuk, former LSU Tiger. Second down and nine. Swing it out to the far side. Moving upfield is Lavalette, but he has stopped shy of the first down. Well, Tackled you, that time by Ben Thibodeau. Well, you can see here, Turlin's coming out with a little bit different mindset offensively. You know, a little bit more grinded out, run it, some swing passes. Almost like, hey, we don't want to get in a track meet and use up some of this clock. Pistol formation. Blaze it. Dumps it off. And his tight end, I think, has enough for the first down. Braden Domain on the catch. The six foot three senior in for the injured Hunter Landry. And he gets a first down there, and Turlings continues to be very efficient through the air. Yeah, just kind of grinded it out four or five yards at a time. This time a little, you know, roll out to his tight end coming across and completion and picking up the necessary yardage. Right up the middle is Judy's to the 30, close to a first down. Well, Judy's, we mentioned, is a two-way player, and he's a big change of pace guy back there. You can see a, a, a completely different burst of explosion. He's their, he's their home run hitter, so to speak, back there, and you can see how quickly he can get going. Good block by Lyndon Boudreau up front. Boudreau and Arwood, they're undersized for interior offensive linemen, but they certainly play with some great technique and they're tough backs. First down here for Turlings is Judy's good open field tackle by Jude Joseph, one of the better athletes on the St. Thomas Moore defense. But still, Turlin's getting what they want here and picking up another first down. And the, the important thing, picking it up on the ground. Six-yard run. They haven't moved the chains yet. I didn't see a flag. But the ball is clearly beyond the chains, and they have not signaled first down or moved the chains. First down marker was that, oh, there's a flag on the far side of the field. 
Illegal formation on the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, that's why they didn't move the change because of the flag and the illegal formation. So that negates a first down. Then they'll have about five, six yards to go. Only the fourth penalty for Turling's Catholic tonight for 20 yards. Second down and six at the 35 yard line. Trips to the far side, again, pistol formation with Judy's in the backfield. Six seconds on the play clock here. Do they recognize that? Three on the play clock. Two, one, they're not, and Chaponche trying to get the timeout, and I think he got it, he did. He did, because <laughs> the referee did not see him at first, and he was about to have an explosion, but he was able to get the timeout there and save the delay of game, but Blazik was clearly unaware of the clock running down there. That, and he was nearly out in midfield to take the snap. Sent it down to the field in Jessica Province. Hard to mention Turling's Catholic and not mention the name Jake DeLome, one of the biggest legends to come out of here, one of the big names, and you continue to give back and stay involved. What keeps you so involved still? Well, I love it. You know, Turling's is like a big family, and uh, obviously it's a lot bigger than it was. Uh, it, it is now than when I went to school. We were single A back then, but uh, we moved back home about five or six years ago, and I have a daughter that's a freshman here. I have another one at fifth grader that will be coming up the pipeline. So. You know, Turlings, it's uh, it's home for us, and we certainly love it. She's got a good student section to join over there, but over on the sideline, I see you over here chatting with Coach Sonny Saponche. Kind of an adjustment from Sonny to, to Dane, and you've got a connection to both. Tell me about your relationship with, with that family. Well, Coach Saponche started coaching me in the eighth grade. Uh, it was his first year here at Turlings, and so I was lucky enough to be coached by him, and he taught me basically anything I, ever, uh, I knew about the quarterback position. And Dane was just a young kid at that time, so I watched him grow up and very happy to see him uh, here. And, He's doing a good job. It's his first year, and uh, Dane's doing a great job. I know the kids really love him. Number one thing that you took away from your time at Turlings Catholic? Oh, gosh. I think there's too many things for me to just – I just it's just a true family atmosphere. Just, there's just something about it. And so many people come back, and, and they still – even as this school has grown from a single-A school to a 4A school, it still has that family feel. And you see that in the stands when you walk in and you see older people that come back, their kids come. It's a legacy-type school. So that's the biggest thing that I take from Turlings. Jake, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Jeff, bring us back to the game. Third down and six, Blazik. Throws over the middle, caught to the end zone. Touchdown, touchdown Rebels, Seth Lovell, 36 yards. This is the same play we saw earlier in the game where Blazik was able to just kind of lay it out over the linebackers and get it in there to Lavalle. They dial it up again here and works beautifully. Nobody behind those linebackers to help in coverage and obviously able to another quick strike right there. Back on the, on the board. You can see here just a little flip over the right over the head of the linebacker. DB lost in coverage and nobody there to tackle Lavalle. Gregory Mott took just a little bit too slow to keep up with the senior wideout. The extra point is good. Three touchdown passes on the night for the senior quarterback Blazek. Two of them have gone to Lavalle, who's now got four touchdowns on the season. Turlings. Now up by 11. More coming up here on Game Time. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College. And we are so excited to have been awarded Forbes Magazine's top 30 two-year technical colleges in America. To achieve this award, ITI was recognized for our high scores in one, earnings of our graduates, two, quality of education, and three, affordability. To learn more, we invite you to visit our campus or go online. ITI Technical College, begin your journey to a better life. Game time on your view. Central at Zachary live Friday at 7 p.m. Brought to you by Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Stronger, faster, better. Seth Lavalle on the night. Four catches for 129 yards and a couple of touchdowns. As he looks out to the fan base here for Turlings Catholic who have come out strong for this rivalry game. 
against the defending Division II state champion, St. Thomas Moore Cougars. That kick is into the end zone for a touchback. All right, the Cougars now, after that really nice drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, took up six minutes and one second off the clock as we look at our monogram express scoring drive. So that was exactly what Turlings wanted to do coming out of the locker room. No, that's right. They got the running game going. They got some of their short passing game going. And then when they needed a good, good pass and play from Blazic, they, they were able to get it and into the end zone. Not much running room up the middle here as the Rebels shut it down. Both teams have not been able to really get the ground game established. On the carry there for St. Thomas Moore, Chris Primo. We have not seen much of William Cryer. We saw him go down with an injury earlier in this football game. Yeah, we're really expecting Primo to have a bigger game, as you can see there, trying to get his chin strap buckled up in case his number is called. Sidney Linden is also out with an injury. And off the right side is Primo. Primo on the carry. And I think both of these coaches, as you can see, and we talked about it at the half, are coming out with a different mentality. You know, yes, our quarterbacks are hot, but they know that we need to get our running game going as well. Third down and a long three coming up here for STM. Third and six. Or third and four, excuse me. Primo again on the ground. Any running room there? He's not going to get there. Loses his helmet in the process. Two Rebel defenders come crashing in on him, including Bo LeBlanc. And now Primo is slow to get up. Yeah, and you don't want to see that. His helmet's off, so obviously he's going to come out for a play, but it is going to be a fourth down here. And let's see. Hopefully he's going to be okay. There's Bo LeBlanc. He is playing with a broken arm. If I had a broken arm, I don't think I'd be even <laughs> yeah, calling this game right yeah. now. <laughs> Just, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, the, the guy broke his arm four weeks ago. I mean, you're talking about, and I know they got all kind of super healing techniques. They put you in tubes and machine. But at the end of the day, his, the bones in his arm were broken. And for him to be back out here on the field, it just kind of tells you what kind of heart and toughness he has. And he's really the emotional and the captain on that defense. Let's take a look at that last play as Primo is able to at least get off the field. Power, but he loses his helmet in this play. Looking for some running room. Let's see if we can see maybe where he, you know, gets injured on this play. And oh, Sanders. oh, right there, right there. You know, I know you. Some people probably thinking, hey, well, that's that's targeting because they hit him in the helmet, but he was not defenseless there, and obviously wasn't intentional. STM looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. There's no way. Holstein, did he draw him off sides? And I think that's oh, what they timeout were, yeah. oh, I think that's what they were trying to do. I, I, I cannot see St. Thomas Moore going for the football. I mean, going for the first down here. Well, we'll find out if they go for it or punt it away when we come back. This is game time on your view. Welcome to Monogram Express, a unique embroidery boutique specializing in personalized and one-of-a-kind gift ideas. Gifts for babies, children, ladies, and even men, we have you covered. Equipped with state-of-the-art embroidery machines, along with an experienced client-focused staff serving you six days a week. Check out the area's largest selection of letters, designs, and thread colors. We're your one-stop embroidery shop. Handling personal, corporate, team, and school logos, and you're welcome to bring in your own items. Conveniently located at 2109 Veterans. Monogram Express makes your ordinary gifts extraordinary. Do you need to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com. STM is down by 12, and Jim Hightower, is he going to gamble here? Fourth down and two from his own 28. Now, we have seen Holstein punt, and that's, look, that's what he'll do. 
They already have two punts for 51 yards, and Holstein will punt it away. This one not nearly as productive as his last punt as it goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Well, this week on Yearview's High School Football Recruiting Podcast, ESPN's Tom Van Heeren will break down some of the new recruiting rules. We'll also hear from UGASports.com's Roddy Nub. Now, Bolsey, he gets us up to speed on the impact of the number one quarterback recruit, Justin Fields' commitment to the University of Georgia. And your views, Dale Halestre previews the Arizona game of the week as two of the top-rated teams in the state, Desert Ridge and Mountain Point, do battle. All that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast with Jeremy Crabtree. Here's a swing pass out to the near side. As for the Rebels, that's Cole Champagne. And that's a pickup of about seven. This is a huge drive for this STM defense. They cannot allow any more points to be scored in this game right now. No, they really can. Obviously, Turlins came out after the half and able to put a touchdown up. And you're right, if they get really any points on this drive, it really begins to put St. Thomas Moore in a tough position. Good tackle there by Paul Laborde on the ball carrier. The 21 points put on the scoreboard tonight for Turlings, the most St. Thomas Moore has given up this season. Remember, they started their year by shutting out their first three opponents. Not, Third down and two. I'd look for Blazik to maybe carry this one. And that's what he'll do. And great pursuit up to the football by Paul Laborde. Stops him shy of the first down. Now, Turlings has already gone for it twice on fourth down from their own territory. So yeah. with the ball at the 45, there's a part of it that wants to just punt it down there and play a little defense. Yeah, decision time, and let's see if they draw them off or they're actually going to go for it. But, you know, Turlins Catholic has, has really forced the issue on fourth down several times tonight. They have not played timid at all. It's, hey, we're going to go take this football game. Fourth down and two. They go for it. And the pass is incomplete. There was contact, but no flags as they tried to get the football to Noah Romero. Good defense, Blake St. Cyr there on the coverage. Dane Chaponche, he wants the pass interference. Well, it was kind of bang bang there. And let's see, here it goes on the replay. And really had a chance to get the ball out in the flat. Oh. Yeah, and he may have got him on the backside there, but. You know, it's so tough to make that call at this position in the game here. Where's the flag, Coach Chaponche's <laughs> yeah, yeah. one? Give me one. Well, they have already. Here's a run up the middle. Not much running room. Looks like we got a new ball carrier. Looks like now you got STM. They're down to their fourth string running back. Yeah, yeah. into the ball game for STM. That would be Noah Frederick. A sophomore running back. Yeah, well, you lost uh, Pryor earlier, and then you just saw Primo go down. Holstein's pass. Did he grab it before it hit the ground? Yes, he did. First down. Cougars moved the chains on a nice sliding grab by Grant Arsenault. Nice catch. Wow, that is really, you might not see a better catch like that uh, this weekend when it comes to running that type of route there that out round on the half roll by the quarterback zips this one over the middle and I think, I think that, that was batted, batted down, down. Huh? it was it was trying to, Dylan trying to get Longanay? It in, yeah get it in there to Arsenault and there's a Bo LeBlanc <laughs> with his robotic arm out there well, just grinded it out gutting it out for his team you know, uh, Chaponche said it was just so tough for him to sit on the sideline and watch. Oh, and, yeah. How and about that? Bo LeBlanc. With the broken arm. Second out and 10. Holstein got time to throw. What and that time it's caught. Nice grab. First down again for the Cougars as Mason Payson has had a big game for STM. Yeah, he's been their go-to guy. And again, I mean, look. Holstein still delivering the ball and any separation. I mean, he just fires a dart so comfortable and throws it so effortless. I mean, that ball is just 
beautifully thrown and good catch by Paysaw, moving the sticks again. Holstein is now thrown for 148 yards and a touchdown. They go back to the ground. Another ball carrier in there for St. Thomas Moore. Now you're out of your fifth string running back here. That's Joel Morrow. Yeah, he's an outside linebacker as well, and Morrow getting the carry. He has 119 yards rushing this season. That's just his ninth carry of the season, but he gets the ball inside the Livingston Parish Economic Development Council red zone. Well, critical drive here for St. Thomas Moore. They want to get it right, obviously, get this thing back into a one-possession football game. Holstein rolling out to his right, dumps it off. It is caught, turning up field. And I think he's got enough for a first down. Well, it's Luke Howard. Well, and you can see this is where coaching comes in because earlier in the game he had the same option to check it down, but he forced it to the back of the end zone incomplete. This time he checks it down to Luke Howard, makes the right decision, and picks up the first down. First and 10 at the 15. Holstein dumps it off again. Luke Howard juggles it, never really able to get moving upfield. And then he is erased along the sidelines there. Well, Luke Howard's been active in the passing game, and they are picking up a, a couple more for St. Thomas Moore. Hayden Arnold on the tackle, a gain of just a yard as we're approaching the one-minute mark of this third quarter. Cougars desperately need to get six on the board here, down by 12. Up the middle. Good blocking up front, paving the way for Joel Morrow to get about six. It brings up third down here. From the nine. Well, what they've had success with is some of the crossing routes towards the deep corner of the end zone. That's where they were able to find number one, Paysaw. I would look for him again on this play. Over the middle and complete. Good coverage by Hayden Judy's Grand Arsenal. Unable to make the grab, and it's fourth down. A field goal really doesn't help you here, Jason. You need six. Yeah, you do. And let's see what they decide to do because you still got a whole nother quarter to play. There's 30 seconds left in the quarter. So the question becomes do you take your points and play out the quarter, or do you force the issue here and go for it on fourth down? And looks like they're lining up to go for it. So on fourth down, Holstein rolls out off the hands of his receivers and turtling Catholic holds on. Well, it's almost like Luke Howard wasn't expecting the football. It was a well-designed play, and it would have been enough for the first down and really kind of reverse pivot. As you can see here, watch kind of reverse pivots field, looking for Luke Howard and just throws a shot. Almost wonder maybe if he just had too much mustard on that one, knowing that his receiver is only about five or six yards in front of him. And again, this is one of those things where, you know, as Holstein matures, he's just a sophomore, they're going to realize, hey, you don't need to throw that, the 90 mile an hour fastball, you know, lower that to about 50 miles an hour and just toss it in there so that we can pick up the first down. Turling's Catholic now from their own eight yard line. Good little hole there, and Carver able to get up to the 15, holding on to that ball tight, gets about six yards. And that should be your final play of the third quarter. Turlings has expanded its halftime lead, which was five. They now lead it by 12, and there's one more quarter left to go in this rivalry matchup between the two biggest Catholic schools in Lafayette. Turlings Catholic. Leading St. Thomas Moore 21 to 9. It's been a lot of fun, plenty of hard hitting, and big pass plays. This is game time on your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Sports in America is one of those rare things that brings everybody together. 
lights come on. It doesn't matter what's been going on at home, at church, in the community. It's just an amazing experience just to see the camaraderie that Friday nights bring. And that's why sports is such a valuable tool to society, to America. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Game time on your view is brought to you by Livingston Parish President Leighton Ricks, who welcomes one and all to one of the fastest growing parishes in Louisiana. Livingston Parish, the place to be. By Monogram Express, we make ordinary gifts extraordinary. And by Louisiana Lift, at Louisiana Lift, we're always on call. Jeff Palermo, Jason DeQuera, and Jessica Province. Second down and four here for Turlings. They are up by 12, looking to try to improve the record to four and three. Run up the middle, and it gets shut down there by Brandon Gannon, who makes another stop. Brandon Gannon, his dad, Chris Gannon, played for the Raging Cajuns back in the day, and ended up uh, playing for the New England Patriots and the San Diego Chargers as well. There's Turlings a big down here. Six of 12 on third downs. St. Third Th and two. St. Thomas Moore really needs a stop here. N number one, because time is ticking, but two, they need two scores in order to, you know, get up in this football game. So here's a, here's where they need the ball back. And I tell you what, we haven't called number 97, Sam Greenwood, much, and he's supposed to be a big factor on that defensive line in this game. The run. And finding the running room, the necessary running room to get the first down. Nice carry there by Landon Trosclair, who got a chance to touch the football. He's a kind of a, a one-cut running back. Once he makes that cut, he goes north-south, and he does it very well. Well, and that's who you want on third and short. You don't want somebody dancing around back there. You want somebody who's going to get north and south for you. First and ten. Ball to 23. Blazek taking some time off that clock now. <laughs> Snapping the ball with two seconds on the play clock. Straight ahead. Hard run in there. Now Turlings is turning to their running game, which has been very good this season. Landon, Landon Trosclair, another first down run for the Rebels. Well, you're, you're thinking, okay, St. Thomas Moore knows his probably obvious running downs. How are they ripping off this big yardage? Well, they're walking their linebackers up to the line, line of scrimmage, Labor and Denae, and when you do that and you create a crease, they're already past that second wave there. First and 10 at the 33. Ooh, almost a ex missed exchange there. Now the ball is on the ground, and the scoop for St. Thomas Moore. Boy, they really needed that, and they get it. Cade Broussard picked it up. That play got off to a tough start from the beginning. Yeah, kind of bobbling the snap back there, and this is exactly what St. Thomas Moore needed, a turnover, and then, you know, in Turlin's own territory, so they'll be in the red zone to start this drive, but you can see, never really got going there, and those are the linebackers we're talking about stepping up, making the hit there, and then I'm thinking, just following the football, but <laughs> decides to try to pick it up, and fortunately, you see that so, so many times, they muff it, but able to make a clean recovery there. Ben Thibodeau with the great tackle to force the fumble, the second forced fumble of the season for him, and Cade Broussard, his second fumble recovery. And this drive starts at the 20-yard line. And Holstein goes back to Wark. It's a double coverage, and it's knocked away. Second down. Well, that's their guy trying to get it into pace on. That's been their big receiver there, and really a good throw, but... You know, good coverage there, too, by Turlins, and just a very tight window to try to squeeze that ball into pace on. Second and 10. Well, this is a must, must scoring opportunity here for St. Thomas Moore. They started another drive, remember, late in the first half at about the same point and failed to score. Holstein throwing again, and that time it is complete inside the five. J.P. Robertson. 16 yards will be first and goal. 
Well, Holstein continues to deliver good footballs. And look, these are not easy routes. This is uh, from the far hash back across the field. And look at that ball just thrown on a rope. Robertson doesn't catch it cleanly, but able to haul it in and now knocking on the door about the four yard line here. Here's the handoff. And I He's think he got it to the end zone. That would be Joe Morrow. And just like that, the Cougars are within one possession. Well, that is that is exactly what they needed to get back in this football game, a turnover and a quick score. And now we've got your one possession football game here. As you see Morrow following that big left side there and able on that second effort just to not go down, but lean forward and stretch that ball out over the plane and get into the end zone. Good power blocking there. Henry Koch, one of the guys leading the way for St. Thomas Moore. They got a big offensive line up there that's battling injuries all season long without Jonathan Harding here tonight. The extra point is good. Morrow gets into the end zone. That is his first touchdown of the season, and it comes at the right time for the Cougars. They're down by five now. We'll be back after this. This is game time on your view. Louisiana's best barbecue is Podna's, smoked to perfection for fall off the bone good eat. Podna's tailgate spread features ribs, chicken, pork, and two sides for only $24.85. That's right, feed three to five people for only $24.85. Available now through October 16th. Podna's, fast service for dine-in or drive through world-famous baked beans, and Party Pack headquarters. Remember the brand, Podna's. Two locations, Florida, Don Moore, and Sherwood Forest at I-12. Hello, this is JT with Livingston Tourism. I just want to encourage you to come out and see us. We're just east of Baton Rouge on Interstate 12. We have Bass Pro, beautiful hotels, RV parks. So if you're looking for just a weekend getaway, you can come see us. Or if you're just traveling, stop by. We have restaurants, shopping, the Antique District, Juban Crossing, golf. Anything you want to do, we have it here in Livingston Parish. So come see us. For any of our events, you can visit us at LivingstonTourism.com or on social media. Jim Hightower's team needed a turnover and a quick six points. That's exactly what they just got to make it a five-point game. Cougars ready to kick it back off. Trevor Robertson is now a perfect 35 of 35 on extra points, and that one makes it to the end zone. Turlings will start this drive at their own 20. Let's send it down to the field in Jessica Province. Jeff, another peak performance injury update for you. Chris Primo, St. Thomas Moore quarterback, that's a senior, will probably not be taking the field again tonight. He is on the sideline being checked out by medical staff and um, looks as though he will be out for the remainder of the game. Jeff. Yeah, he lost his helmet on that bone-crushing hit a couple of possessions ago. Well, and a running back core that's already thin just got thinner. Yep. Blazik now. Will run straight ahead, now turns it to the outside, and he's got a little bit of running room, and he's got to make sure he has ball security here. Gets about seven and a hard running run by the senior. Well, and for Turlins, I think they came out in the second half and really did what they needed to do, and that's get the running game going. That's good positive yards on first down. Obviously, it looks like here now a penalty, and they're walking it off, but... You know, it's the turnovers, it's these penalties, it's these things that begin to shoot you in the foot and that can really change the momentum in a football game. And the fourth quarter has been a, a tough spot for Dane Chaponche and his team. They've been outscored 33 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and this is where they've had trouble, backed up to their own 10 yard line. Real dangerous area of the field offensively. Intercepted! Touchdown, St. Thomas Moore. Well, I was just mentioning it can be a dangerous area of the field, and there's Ben Tippino. I mean, what a couple of series he's had. He comes up, he makes the big hit to cause the fumble so St. Thomas Moore can get in the end zone, and this time he takes matters in his own hands and, you know, just a little lethargic on that quick slant, and Ben Tippino just steps right in front of it and takes it to the house. Watch here. Blazik just doesn't see Ben Tippino coming. And just kind of a little lethargic there and, and, and trying to get the ball in there to his receiver. And no, sir, Tippino steps in front of that and takes it to the house. And how quickly has this game changed? 
Unbelievable. Ben Thibodeau, the man of the hour, with the forced fumble and then the pick six. STM has had a few defensive touchdowns in this season. And the extra point is a two-point conversion as they get up by three as they fake the extra point and then toss it into the end zone to Luke Howard. Well, Smarty heads up play call. And you want to know why Coach Hightower is in the Louisiana Hall of Fame and has 400 wins is because he thinks about the details like this, knowing that they need to at least have a field goal lead and calls up the two-point conversion. And there's Ben Tippetto stepping in, cutting that slant off and getting into the end zone. Perfectly executed fake field goal and STM's on top. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast friendly claim, but do you want to be a legend? You gotta get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's gonna keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks, I'm good. You can live the dream life right now at Summa Crossing Apartments in Livingston Parish. Imagine luxurious and affordable living where it is safe and the school systems are awesome. A quiet community with a private, well-stocked lake and a cool, relaxing swimming pool. Easy access for Baton Rouge commuters or students at Southeastern. It's not a dream, it's real and waiting for you. Come see Summa Crossing, exit 19 on I-12. Here's a look at the two-point conversion, sprinting out of there and then flipping it to a wide-open Luke Howard. That was Dalen Cambre. He's the uh, backup quarterback tonight. And STM, that student section is jumping at this moment. That ball gets into the end zone, a two-point conversion. 15 points in a matter of... 27 seconds next week hopefully we'll have another good one for you on game time as we'll be in northeast baton rouge parish the zachary broncos ranked number five or excuse me ranked number 10 in class 5a taking on their district rivals the central wildcats join us for the action friday night at 6 30 with the louisiana farm bureau insurance companies pregame show countdown to kickoff blazik on the ground blazik it's about three or four. Boy, they're trying to tug at that football again. Sixth interception of the season thrown by Blazik. And Ben Thibodeau has had a career here in the early part of this fourth yeah, quarter. I mean, he has changed this game. You know, you don't want to say by himself, but he's made two big time plays. Second and six. Well, if you're Dane Chaponche, you tell your guys, listen, that's, this is a little adversity here. Let's weather it and get back to what we were doing before. Plays it to throw. They want to set up the screen. Nothing there and look out. Oh, my gosh. Garber got drilled. Hopefully he's okay as he got leveled on the play. It's just an incomplete pass. And Garber will have to leave after taking a massive hit. Well, Blazik kind of set him up on this one. It didn't look good from the start. He to pick up many yards, and what he tries to do is just float it over the top, but it allows the defensive back just to come up and, ooh, I don't know what the hit was. I want to take a look and see. Man, that's very close to being defenseless and targeting. Um, you know, hard to tell exactly on that play, but, you know, really, his running back didn't have a chance. Third down. Blazik has to get out of the pocket. No one open downfield, and he goes down well shy of the first down, and it's a three and out. And hey, the linebacker making a hit. This is Blake St. Cyr with the big time hit. Yeah, and even there, it's so bang bang, I can't really see where the hit is, but you know, good thing that Garber was just able to get up there and jog off, so maybe it was more in the pad level than to the hit. Caleb Winnington out the punt. He's averaging 36 yards a punt. Well, they need a big one from him here. Another high snap, but able to get it off. Weird looking 
spin on the ball, but it's a great punt. Just what Turlings needed there. Down at the 25. 48 yard punt. We thought it would be a good one, my friend, and uh, here we go. We got a three point ball game. Seven minutes, 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And you know, when these two schools get together, cross town, know each other in the same district, you know it's gonna be a tough fought game. 15th meeting between these two teams. STM leads the series history, eight wins to six losses. A few years ago, there was a game where Turlings made a massive comeback to beat STM. Here's the pass, and what a job defensively to knock that one away. Bailey Prejean. Well, that's their guy, Prejean. I mean, you got to give him a ton of credit there. That was a great throw for Holstein so that his receiver could go up and get it. But Prejean, he could get his arm up in there and really kind of knock that ball out. Watch here. It's great coverage, but it was thrown above his head. So he gets up there and uses that right arm, just able to knock that football out and preventing a big first down pickup. Second and 10. And he mishandles the step and Holstein falls on it. Ooh, things uh, starting to get a little tight here for these well, two teams. Yeah, it's all on the line and, you know, uh, blood pressure's racing and every play at this point becomes a critical play. And that time, lack of concentration between the snapper and the quarterback and brings up a third and very long situation. Third down and 17. Holstein. Four men rushing, winds up, throws, ball batted around, and it's incomplete. Great job again defensively for Turlings. Bailey Prejean on the deflection. Well, that's why Sharpen Shea says he's his best cover corner he's got out there, and that time he was right there with Roberson. Obviously, Roberson, Robertson a little bit bigger and taller than him, but Prejean able to go up, almost tips it back to Robertson and able to make the play in that close. Good thing that he held that right arm. Watch this, Frejean has the, the wits to hold that right arm down so that he can't bring it around and, and make the completion. Robertson to punt, standing at his own three. Good snap, good punt. Lavalle lets it bounce, now picks it up at the 35, trying to make a little bit of a play here, and then he's gonna be brought down at the 41 yard line. Good job by the punt coverage team. Tracking him down for St. Thomas Moore. We got another flag ben out Thibodeau. here. That guy's making plays on special teams. 47-yard punt, seven-yard return. Formation. Well, you make him punt it again? I don't know. I mean, it's just so, obviously, so risky yeah. fielding these punts. And you saw Lavalle that time. He didn't come up and catch it. He tried to field it off the bounce. Fortunate there wasn't a mistake, but if I've got the ball back and I'm at my at, at, at my 45 yard line, do I want to risk anything? Roughing the punter, a, a botch? By the kicking team, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. We'll replay fourth down. You know, you actually have the ball, a chance to go up. Do you want to risk all the things that could go wrong, fielding it cleanly, fumble? But obviously, Sharp and Sharp and Shea has has, has decided to um, make them make them repunt the football. That is the first St. Thomas Moore penalty since back in the second quarter. Four penalties, 31 yards. This is, out of all the games we've done this season, Jason, the fewest amount of penalties we've had. And it's been wonderful to watch yes. and broadcast without all the penalties, <laughs> all the stoppage. We might get out of here before midnight. <laughs> you know, good, clean game. 24-21 It's what a football game is supposed to look and feel like. Robertson just got that one and, off. And he hits the punter, and there's the flag. That's why I say you don't. Just take the football. Take the football, and you don't, and that's the risk you run, and I think this is no, going to be... a personal the, foul, Yeah, too. the 15, 15 yard, yard, he clobbered it. He clobbered it. And, you know, I know you're going for the block. I just think that's a risky play at this point in the football game. Two huge special team plays that have gone against Turlings. Remember the high snap on the punt as Judy's trying to get in there, and, yeah... Judy's tried to avoid his man, but then when his teammate came over there, ran right into him. Cross Gillery knocked into Judy's, and it was an easy call for the officials. And, and, and let's see if that's the difference in this ball game, because remember, Turlings had the football at the 45, 
They took the penalty, made him re-kick it, and now St. Thomas More comes out first and 10 with six minutes left on the clock and begins to uh, be able to work on the clock or even, maybe even put up more points. I'm wondering if they're discussing, is this going to be 5 or 15? Has well, the other thing you have to wonder, and we'll have to wait and see, is the... First of all, roughing the kicker by the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. We'll take a look at it once again. Well, Judy's comes in there, but... You also see Cross Guillory getting in there too, and you know, both of them may have made some contact there, but again, you just can't have that. From the 27 to go to the ground. Good run there, gets about five or six. Well, let's see if Turling's defense can get that turnover. Joe Morrow getting some carries here tonight, late in the ball game, probably something he did not anticipate having. The top three running backs for STM all down with injuries at this moment. Lost Cryer in the first half. Chris Primo went down in the second half, and Cindy Linden did not play at all tonight because of an injury. Second and five. Caleb Holstein, the sophomore QB, trying to guide STM to a come from behind win. Holstein will throw, and it's complete. Mason Payson and Holstein have really been a nice combination tonight. Well, and I think Coach Hightower realized, yeah, we could run the ball and work on the clock, but Holstein is just so hot tonight, you know, and he's completing, throwing the ball so well. Let him do what he does, and that's completing passes and picking up another big first down there. 176 yards passing for the sophomore single caller, and he also has a touchdown on the season, or a touchdown in this game. From the 44, Morrow. Left side, Morrow showing some ability to break some tackles and he's close to a first down. Hayden Judy's finally wrapped him up. Well, and when you got a quarterback there that's still taking chances down the field, it's gonna open up the run game onto their third running back, Joel Morrow, and able to get around that left side there and five. really pick up some big time yards five on carries. first down. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. Five carries for 31 yards for Morrow. Second and one. You know, the other guy, Peyton Landry's not in this ball game, so that's another ball carrier here for STM that they don't have. Morrow bounces and spins off one. He's gonna pick it up. Tackler, and he does have the first down. Well, now you, you'd suspect, hey, they're gonna, they're gonna try to eat this clock up some now. And, and here's but, the other negative thing for Turlings. They only have one timeout left. Yeah, they're gonna work on this clock and then they know if Holstein has to step in and make a throw on third down, they're very comfortable with that. Nine seconds on the play clock. Holstein will throw over the middle. Off the hands of Peso. Wow. I mean, you're thinking, everybody in the stadium is thinking, hey, they're probably going to run the ball, work the clock, but when you got Holstein as on as he is and Pace on having a big game, really, that's just a drop. It's a great call because obviously Turlin's crowding the line of scrimmage, thinking run, and God, just delivering that ball on a, I mean, those are dimes he's dropping, Jeff. Unbelievable. Player down there. Looks like uh, Hayden Judy's is down on the ground. Boy, and that's one of their big, big players on both offense and defense for Turlin. So luckily he's able to get up and hopefully he can get himself back in there. But with Holstein dropping back and still firing the ball, you're going to need him in the secondary for sure. STM had just 16 yards rushing in the first half. Morrow has rushed for 34 yards by himself here in the second half. Jeff, I'm giggling. I'm getting a text from my buddy, Senator Jonathan Perry. He's letting us know we got good football in his <laughs> district, too. You know, and uh, he says, y'all need to come here more often. I told you we got good football. So we well, got to get down to Abbeville <laughs> where Senator Perry's from. Yeah. Second down and 10. This has been fun to watch. Morrow 
Left side. Does it again. He's got the first down. Well, Dave Chaponche said their number one priority is to stop the run. And they did that. They did. For they three did. quarters. And now, and now they can't stop Joe Morrow well, and this Cougars running attack. Well, and part of the problem is their defense has been on the field almost the entire second half. And, and they're just getting winded. They're getting gassed a little bit here. They have not had the offensive production but for that first drive of the second half. And the defense is just getting tired. They're getting a little gashed here. Morrow gets it again, that offensive line for, look at this, Morrow stays on his feet, nearly broke away, but I think Bo LeBlanc caught his foot just in time to trip him up. Yeah, and he came up and made the initial hit, but remember, he's playing with a broken arm, so it's kind of hard to wrap up with both, and, you know, had struggled a little bit, but able to get his arm back out there and, 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 and make the tackle. Turlings needs something positive defensively right here, either a loss, Obviously, a turnover would be great if you're a Rebels fan. Well, and if you can hold them here two down, perhaps St. Thomas Moore might attempt the field goal and, and force Turlins to make a touchdown to beat him. Noah Frederick close to the first down marker. Yeah, that's very close. I think he may. Let's see. Alex Gilbo on the tackle. Yeah, and these running lanes that just weren't there are beginning to open up a little bit more. And the other thing is this, you mentioned it one time out, and when they got the ball in this drive, there was six minutes and 48 seconds. Now the clock is heading under the three-minute mark, and this is exactly how you're supposed to close out a football game. Well, they need to pick up this third down here. I formation for the Cougars. Hand off to the fullback, and I don't think he got it. He's at, at least a half a yard short. Wow. Maybe even a little more. What Fourth do you, down. You gotta, what do you do here, what do you man? Go for it. Put it away, huh? Well, field goal, I don't know. It only gives you a six point lead. And your field goal kicker, Robertson, his long on the season is 24. Let's take a break. 2.42 left to go. STM holding on to a three point lead over Turlings. This is game time on your view. your business is looking for growth opportunities in the capital region, find out why Livingston Parish is the place to be. We have available sites, tremendous access to and from your facility. We have an excellent workforce pipeline and our quality of life is second to none. To find out more, contact our office at 225-686-3982 or visit our website at ledc.net. You can live the dream life right now at Summa Crossing Apartments in Livingston Parish. Imagine luxurious and affordable living where it is safe and the school systems are awesome. A quiet community with a private, well-stocked lake and a cool, relaxing swimming pool. Easy access for Baton Rouge commuters or students at Southeastern. It's not a dream, it's real and waiting for you. Come see Summa Crossing, exit 19 on I-12. Here's the ball game. St. Thomas Moore facing fourth down and one. They are one for three on fourth downs tonight. I formation, they're up by three late in the fourth quarter. Here's the pitch, and Turley, oh, the second effort by Morrow has got it the first down, I believe. Wow, they had him stopped, and Jeff, you know how I feel about those deep tosses on fourth and short. You know, it allows for penetration, and Turley's Catholic actually got the penetration, as you see right there, Bo LeBlanc limping off which isn't a good sign but just didn't wrap up in the backfield that was what they needed and this clearly looks like a first down yeah, and they're gonna and, measure it just for and, prosperity's and, sake and now you're gonna have to completely sell out you burn up your time out and just hope that you can somehow get the football back They'll stretch that chain but it's not gonna be far enough for turlings a big first down for the cougars wow so close What a drive for STM, and what a night for Joe Morrow. Comes in here late in this ball game, nine carries for 52 yards, only had 119 yards rushing on the season. But Not over yet. Now you got to be in there 
trying to strip and grind and get that football out of there, create a turnover. Morrow gets it, gets hit right at the line of scrimmage and is dropped. No timeouts for the Rebels, so the clock will tick. Good tackle there by Garrett Russo. 14 play, 52 yard drive. And more importantly than that, it's the amount of time. This, this drive started at nearly the seven minute mark and they have just about milked almost this entire clock and the clock's still running. 7.48 is how much they've taken off the, or they started this drive with seven minutes and 48 seconds left. Morrow, he's gotta stay in bounds here and he does. He is tackled at the 18. And Jeff, I go back to that to that punt. I mean, you, Turlins, remember, Turlins had the football. They actually had the put football at the 45-yard line, and they wanted them to repunt the football because of a penalty. And once you did that, they never got the football back. Yeah. Third and five. Big upset in college football tonight, Jason. Number two, Clemson losing to Syracuse. No, you got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh, wow. 27-24. What is that, the orange-orange game there? Huh? <laughs> Morrow gets taken down. So, Turlings, there's, this is fourth down. Let's see. Turlings will get, oh, now you got an STM player that's hurt. Man, that's going to stop the clock. 46 seconds. That stops the clock. They were trying to say, don't get up, get up. Yeah. But... <laughs> It, he went down and See. yeah, it stopped the clock. That's the break Four that Turlins really needed because this thing was going to get well under. Now the clock's going to start ticking here. Yeah. So if Turlins can get a stop, they'll have and, oh about 12 seconds or so. 10. I mean, and, they're not going to. They'll have like one play left, and STM's going to take this all the way down absolutely. and just call a timeout. And, and I think it's the right play not to kick the field goal because just like we saw when you repunted the football and you had a personal foul, too many bad things can go on by kicking the football. If you get blocked, you can return it. So, you know, I think going for this is going to be the right call if that's what they decide to do. This could be win number 402 for Jim Hightower. It'll be a memorable one. Who was born in California. He is the only coach in Louisiana, or at least it's believed, he's, it's believed he's the only coach in Louisiana to win district titles in all five classifications. Let's send it down to the field of Jessica Province. Well, Jeff, you're a guy, so you may be able to relate, but men don't have an issue saying their age. Legendary head coach Jim Hightower, 68 years old. What his days look like? Football, 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 Saturday recap the game get ready for the next week but on Sundays he is cycling nearly 50 miles his favorite hobby is cycling and he takes trips to Colorado up to north uh, a lot of times during his birthday that's what he likes to do to go and get away now he goes uphill he goes downhill and he even out cycles some of his coaches Jeff can you cycle about 50 miles no oh, fourth down the ball is knocked away so Turlings has a pulse Bailey Prejean has had a really good game, knocked it away. So 15 seconds on the clock, maybe two plays. Jeff, I was getting nervous for you. Jessica said, you're a guy, you know what I'm about <laughs> to say. I'm, look, I'm, I'm getting tense up here. But, uh, as, you know, Coach Hightower, I mean, that guy, the amount of energy he has and, you know, does something that's called the triple bypass up in Colorado where he cycles over 100 miles in about seven or eight hours, man. Not for me, my friend. No, that's not what I'm doing on Sunday mornings. <laughs> All right, let's see what kind of magic Turlings has here. Well, there's a flag, and that stops the clock. So I would imagine you got to put the clock back to 15 seconds. Yeah, and you need a couple of big possessions. And Double foul, false start. By the offense, five-yard penalty, reset the clock to 15 seconds. What you got to think here is that uh, I see the field goal kicker warming up in the net. You need a you need a couple of big big balls to go your way, either pass interference, some big completions downfield, and just hope that you can get in range. 
so that your field goal kicker has a shot. Turlings led it 21 to nine. And it went away quickly. And we know Ian Judy's has a pretty big leg. He puts a lot of his kickoffs in the end zone. So they just gotta force this thing down the field. Try to try to come up with maybe two. You probably got time for two big completions. There's a 15 yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, that helps. I mean, to, to, to have a shot, this ball is on the 30 yard line. You really need to get this ball to St. Thomas Moore's 30 yard line to really have a shot at taking a makeable field goal. Trying to get the chain set on the far side of the field as you see it in your shot there. Boyd Guy and his officiating crew have done an outstanding job tonight. Here we go. Blazik's got to step up. He's going to run. He's going to try to get out of bounds. He takes a big That's hit. That's game. Stops the clock with uh, five seconds. Can they get up and spike it? I they, yeah, I think they could get this done. I didn't see it made the first down. That's a good pickup. I guess the first down. He spikes it, so one more chance here. Yeah, that's good. 59 yards to go. Yeah, if he had not picked up the first down, the game clearly would have been over, but able to get beyond. Now, I mean, it's it's not even about the kicker. You just got to, I mean, this is Hail Mary time. You got to launch this ball as far as you can throw it and hope that your receivers can make a play for you or either draw a pass interference. Game can't end on a defensive penalty. Blazik under pressure, has to throw it away, and that's ball game. Cougars win, 24-21. Well, big Brandon Gannon that time, they didn't get him blocked, and he's been in that backfield quite a bit and really had a good game on defense, able to get in there and get to Blazik and not bring him down, but obviously forced him to throw the ball much sooner than he wanted, but I tell you what, what a what an exciting ball game. I know not the outcome that Turlins want, but they fought, they fought hard. Both of these teams did. And this is what happens when two two teams, two district rivals show up and play each other. You get this kind of competitive game. Take a break. We'll hear from Jim Hightower when we come back. What a ball game on game time. You've been watching your view. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the soccer star to the soccer mom. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Time on your view. Central at Zachary live Friday at 7 p.m. Brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone. From those who serve aces to those who serve others. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name. Getting you back in the game of life. What a ball game from Rebels Field at Turlings Catholic High School as the St. Thomas Moore Cougars, the defending champs in Division II, rally to beat their rival Turlings Catholic 24-21. Let's send it down to the field and hear from winning head football coach Jim Hightower. Jeff, thanks so much, Coach. You entered the fourth quarter with only nine points on the board, ending with 24. What statement did your team make tonight? Well, just that we're going to keep playing hard as they did. You know, we got a couple breaks in the, in, in that fourth quarter. Uh, big plays, really. You know, Ben Thibodeau made two big, big plays. Uh, defense stepped up and made, made some stops when they had to, and the offense were able to put it away. So, you know, just a good team effort. But, you know, got a hand, hats off to Turlings Rebel. They played really well. They played exceptionally well. It was a great ball game. I think the fans got their money's worth. I would agree with that for sure. Next week you play Northside. What adjustments are you going to make? 
we're just going to see if we can recoup from this one and heal up a little bit, and, and uh, we'll we'll get to work next week. Best of luck, Coach. Congratulations on your Thank win. You. Thank you. Jeff. Yeah, they're going to need to heal up a little bit. Uh, no Peyton Landry, one of their quarterbacks, and they lost a couple of running backs in this game as well, but somehow still figured out a way to win this one. 24 to 21, thanks to some two big defensive plays that turned this game around. We take a look at the good plays that happened for St. Thomas Moore that led to this huge rally. Big force fumble there. Knocked out of there. Picked up by Kay Broussard. Touchdown by Morrow, who was impressive in the fourth quarter. And then the interception returned for a touchdown by Ben Thibodeau, who also just forced that fumble that you saw a second ago. And then the two-point conversion. Perfectly executed into the end zone by Luke Howard, and then the defense did the rest, finishing this ball game off. And St. Thomas Moore improves to six and one on the season. Turlings Catholic, a hard fought loss. They fall to three and four. We'll take one more break and wrap things up from Turlings Catholic High School. This is game time on your view. Okay, listen up. I know you offer great auto rates, local agent, fast friendly claims, but do you want to be a legend? You got to get tough, kid. When I'm done with you, nothing's going to keep you down. Great talk, Brett. Can we get back to your auto quote now? All right, sure. Great. <laughs> Get great auto rates and local agents at favrates.com from Farm Bureau Insurance. How about some water? No, thanks. I'm good. Louisiana's best barbecue is Podna's. Smoked to perfection for fall off the bone good eat. Podna's tailgate spread features ribs, chicken, pork, and two sides for only $24.85. That's right. Feed three to five people for only $24.85. Available now through October 16th. Podna's, fast service for dine-in or drive through world-famous baked beans, and Party Pack headquarters. Remember the brand, Podna's. Two locations, Florida, Don Moore, and Sherwood Forest at I-12. Jim Hightower talking to his team after a thrilling victory over Turley's Catholic, 24 to 21, the final score. St. Thomas Moore, champions, sometimes don't play as well as they would like, but figure out how to win football games, and that's what they did here tonight. Well, and that's why they have a coach who's in the Hall of Fame, you know, <laughs> because they know how to win games, and, you know, you just feel for Turlins, you yes, know, because, you, yeah. you know, you, I, I felt that coming into this game, they really had an opportunity to get over the hump, beat St. Thomas Moore, but at the end of the day, just a couple of mistakes, and my God, Ben Thibodeau, man. Yeah, I mean, big he plays. changed the entire game with two plays, with the fumble, and then stepping in front of the slant route and into the end zone, and Man, um, you know, that, that's really the difference in this ball game, Jeff. Well, let's take a look at our airing and out play. The game brought to you by Cox Home Life. And Ben Thibodeau, the interception return for a touchdown. And that really was the dagger for Turling's Catholic. They were never able to recover after that. The two-point conversion would make it 24-21. One of the few mistakes on the night made by Turlings quarterback Wesley Blazek, who was really impressive in this game. He threw three touchdown passes in this contest as you look at number 45, Ben Thibodeau. He'll have a really good weekend, trust me. That was an <laughs> impressive performance to cause the Ford's fumble and the interception. Well, that's going to do it for our broadcast here tonight. One of our better games of the 2017 season. We still have a lot of great action coming up as we have some more regular season action. And tonight's game was brought to you by Livingston Parish Economic Development Council, reminding you that Livingston Parish is the place to be. And by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance, ready to serve you with auto insurance, homeowners insurance, life insurance, and more. Real service, real people. And by Gary Lewis Properties from apartments, condominiums, and townhomes. Gary Lewis Properties, a top provider in Baton Rouge of residential, and commercial property for rent. It was a fun night of football at Turlings Catholic High School, St. Thomas Moore and Turlings, two great schools in Lafayette battling it out. 
but it was St. Thomas 4 pulling out the victory 24-21. Next week, we're back in East Baton Rouge Parish. The Zachary Broncos hosting district rival Central. Want to thank everyone involved in the broadcast. Our producer, Cameron Galloway, director, Walter Volpatti, sideline reporter, Jessica Province. For my broadcast partner, Jason DeQuere, I'm Jeff Wormel. We'll see you next weekend from Zachary. Thanks for watching High School Football on Your View.